Good day and good evening and welcome to Small Kai's side quest with me, Kaizuchaiji, but you could just call me Kai. Tonight, we're going to go through the Myths of the Realm Alliance Raid series, which is of course the Endwalker one. Unlike, so, so the, the normal raid series we did like the last two weeks, the Pandemonium stuff is, like it is significant for the story of the game at large, but I, I will say that what we're going to be dealing with today is going to be a little bit more, like, generally spoilery, in a way. Like, it isn't related to the MSQ itself, because that's how side content works, but I can't really get into too much specifics, because that would be spoilers of itself. But I just wanted to mention that, that uh, what we're dealing with is something that might be considered a spoiler for someone who's even new to the game. Hard to say, like, spoiler as in, you're going to recognize the names. Where sometimes, if you see, like, Endwalker content, you might be looking at it like, yeah, I don't know any of these characters, so it's kind of meaningless to me because I'm in Stormblood or something like that. But it is worth keeping in mind. <clears throat> yeah, we, we'll try and get through it. Um, as we also observed the last few weeks, the Endwalker raid is, uh, so Pandemonium, is so long that it kind of took two sessions to make it through. Um, so it is possible this happens here as well. I have actually streamed at least two of the Alliance raids previously on my main when I did them for the first time. So I do know they take a while. Oh, thank you. Just a moment. Also, hey Orkney, Gasol, Aradel, Girahin, Luka the Majid, and Ilya. I hope you're all doing very well. Yeah, Gasol's a spoiler for the whole game until you've done the storyline. Yeah, way. Hey, Zaf. Hope you're doing well as well. I'm sorry to hear that, Ymir. Um, I hope it gets better soon. <coughs> hey, dog. Hope you're doing well as well. Hey, Ajibasta. Have you had something to eat yet? These might be worth... For some reason, they're worth something. Incredible. Money. Cooking lunch right now. Oh, perfect. Mm. It's probably fine. Yeah, almost definitely, Castle. It is, it is more... It's funny to... Uh, pick up some items and then go, like, some really old item like that. And then go, huh, weird. 3,000 for this old item that you can't use for anything. Very pink. Right, I do believe it is this guy. Naomi's here. Mm, right. Yeah, th that, that looks... Hmm, do you all think this is the correct quest? Hmm, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm, looks almost like heaven here, doesn't it? <laughs> no? <laughs> Erdel says, since we're about to meet the gods, what are your patron deity, everyone? That is a good question. Small Kai's is all thick. For, for no particular... Uh, for, not for, the re for, for any reason beyond memes. Because, he, because uh, the joke is that uh, we chose all thick because, he, because he's... 
all thick, you know? Yeah? Huh? Huh? It actually took until, like, mid-Endwalker before someone actually asked. <laughs> yeah, I kinda did, Archie Buster. I think, yeah, I think it was Emir that asked back then. See, we have Menfina, Menfina, Nofika, Nemea, Menfina, Azema. <laughs> Pulsey says, forgetting my patron deity was probably the first thing I forgot in Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is a very important decision. Which deity do I choose? Just click one and just click next. Anyway. It's actually funny. If I remember correctly, which deity you chose... I don't know if that still appears in the character creator. I'm guessing it doesn't. But ages ago... It actually impacted your elemental resistances. Like, for example, if you chose one of the lightning deities or thunder deities, you were slightly more resistant to thunder damage. Like, we're talking very slightly. Like, it, it was never going to be a thing that you're like, oh man, I have to use a Fantasia because I have to fight uh, Ifrit now. But uh, Gearhin says it now specifically says that it has no gameplay impact. Okay, I specifically remember when I made my first character that I looked at this and was like, Ooh, is this important? Hmm. Um, hey Derby, hope you're doing well as well. Oh, right, he misses asked why Small Dragon Kai's patron deity was so hard, because my mains is not Sol, the traitors. <coughs> Gazel says, some players bought Fanta just to change deity after this Alliance Raid series came out. I'm sure there's a lot more Nofika believers nowadays. Look at the magic says, I'd imagine that back in the AR days, that little bit of fire resistance might matter on Phoenix in some extreme edge case. I don't know. What I do know, and once we've gone ba past this, I'll get back to the quest, but what I do know is that the story of elemental resistance is that most resistance was gained primarily through materia, right? So, like, fire resistance materia and stuff and back in ARR if you had fully spirit bonded with a piece of equipment to get a materia out of it you had to c use convert this is what we nowadays read as extract materia uh, in a realm reborn and actually up to a point in shadowbringers as i recall um you turned the gear into materia. So you didn't just like spawn materia out of nothing. You actually had to like sacrifice the gear to make materia. You could, of course, get materia through other means, but that still meant that materia was somewhat more complicated to acquire in, in vast quantities, right? Um, but if you wanted to fight Ifrit, and you needed the fire resistance, hypothetically, for that, then you would have to buy fire materia, clear the gear you were already wearing from fire materia, and then socket all that fire resistance into your gear, farm Ifrit, which, as far as I recall, they I'm guessing they didn't have a weekly lockout then either for, you know, the extremes. I'm guessing here it's been a long time and I didn't actually play at that time. But then once you were done, would you then go, okay, so Titan next and then remove all your fire resistance materia and then put in like earth resistance. And then later you're fighting Ramu or something and you put in lightning resistance. And then when you're fighting Phoenix, for example, do you then put fire resistance in again? You, you can probably see where this is going. The core issue and part of the reason why things like resistance gear and uh, resistance gear and resistance materia that is like 
situationally relevant and extremely inconvenient has kind of been phased out. Um, they don't really want you to feel like you have to to change your gear for every fight. Um, Kirihin says, did removing material also have a fail chance back then? Yes. Uh, the way that the materia has worked always is that lower grade materia has a higher chance of successfully being recovered, similar to how lower grade materia has a higher chance of being overbelted into gear. Um, the way that it works currently is that if you try to like retrieve materia that is old, old it will always be gain like recovered like a hundred percent chance if it is grade eight or lower as i recall but current expansion stuff has a chance to fail when you try to retrieve it <clears throat> Ostravi says was this actually a thing at some point yes that is actually the reason why if you go to the market board and check materia that there is a bunch of resistance materia that will read something like some people believe that this kind of stuff works against to protect you against the elements or whatever but that doesn't work anymore because those items existed and they used to work they didn't make you like immune to damage but it reduced the damage it took which means that if you had problems with beating say ifrit because he hurt too much you could put in some fire resistance right you could do that like it was an option but it's really annoying right now also used to be primary stat materia like strength materia um that was um usually pointless um for most roles except tanks usually the reason for this being that your weapons and your armor basically always came out of the box with maxed out primary stats so you there wouldn't be space for like a strength materia in your strength gear um but there was an exception because it wasn't until Shadowbringers that they normalized accessories to have the same primary stats across the board for each role. And what I mean by that is that before Shadowbringers, accessories only had vitality on them if it was for a tank. So like ex something something ring of uh, fending would have vitality and like two secondary stats on them. Whereas a blah blah ring of uh, of casting would have intelligence and two secondary stats on them, and because of this, a ta a healer or a DPS could technically melt vitality into accessories if they wanted to. They probably didn't, but they could. Um, and tanks could melt strength into their accessories. As it says, tanks could simply wear Dragoon skin. That's true. They could do that up to Heaven's Ward. Um, there they could just, you know, use the uh, the melee DPS accessories if they wanted strength. So they could, like, choose and mix and match depending on how much vitality they actually needed. But in Stormblood, I actually remember that it became a thing... Uh, that I, I, I specifically remember because my free company at the time told me about it that it was quite funny that a lot of party finder groups never took off because their item level requirement was that you had full best in slot but best in slot for tanks had a full crafted right side and you might be say, thinking to yourself why would they want that and the reason for that was that you could melt strength on all the all that gear and you could over melt strength on all that gear so it gave slightly more DPS to do that Exactly, Girhin. Vitality is technically tank's primary stat. Exactly. Um, so that's um kind of the the story on that. But then in Shadowbringers, they just removed primary stat material and just made it so that all accessories had your primary stat and vitality on it. So now it didn't didn't matter anymore. Gazel says, I believe overmelding could break your gear. I 
don't believe so. I, I'm pretty sure that has not been the case, but it wouldn't be too shocking of a revelation if it could, because this kind of gear enhancement used is usually a thing in other MMOs, right? Where, oh, you could boost it further, but oh, watch out, it could break. Buy this store item to protect your item, right? Astrami says, so they reworked previous expansion gear? Yes. The direct hit you'll find on tank and healer gear from A Realm of Born and Heavensward was actually accuracy. Yes, hit chance. They just went, never mind, and just removed that and replaced it with direct hit. That's why there's direct hit on tanking and healer gear in expansions uh, back in the day. Also, hey Simplex and hey Zach, hope you're both doing very well. Pulsey says, Do, does deity still impact on marriage ceremony in the shroud slightly visually? Mm, I don't believe so. Yeah, Gyrahin, part of the reason why you might want to use lower level, like lower grade materia, mainly if you're a crafter or a gatherer, is if you don't need more points than the lower grade one, it'll be easier to melt it and it'll be easier to retrieve it. And that's the main reasons. If you don't care about that, you could just use grade 10s and 9s across the board. <clears throat> it's just harder to do that. When are we getting the stat rework where tank damage scales over vitality instead? That sounds really weird. Uh, oh, Aradel has something to add to your question, Pulsey. Uh, Aradel says, you see your deity symbol behind you during the cutscene. Right then. Let's do it. Ah, Kansu, welcome back. Are you perchance here to see Kryl? I'm given to understand she has a task for which she, for which she desires your assistance. Then I shall fetch her at once. Pray wait a moment. I will be praying. Kaitsu, my thanks for coming. If you're now available, I'd like you and Raha to assist me in the task I'd mentioned. For you to call on Kaitsu, I assume the task in question is somewhat more exciting than sorting through paperwork, which I'm pleased to add I have finished. So if Katsu's ready, then so am I. I'll venture to the bounty has only served to whet my appetite for fieldwork. Not to oversell things, but I suspect you won't be won't be disappointed. Ere I divulge the details, however, permit me to provide some background. As you know, our organization, the Students of Baldesian, was founded by my grandfather, Galuf. Our stated mission was to uncover the mysteries of Heidelin and interpret her will, particularly through the study of her gift to us. We've since learned the whole truth, and it might be said it might be said that we've fulfilled our mission, but our work is far from over. In the course of our endeavors, we've also sought to, re to devise countermeasures against threats that come to light. Our involvement with the Warring Triad is an example of such. It is my belief that, in continuing to seek out the unknown and dealing with the threats, we best carry out the we best carry on the students' mission. We best honor though. We best honor those we lost when the Isle of Val was destroyed. Not? Forgive me, I didn't mean to darken the mood. In saying all this, I simply wanted to clarify our organization's purpose for a new age. In line with said purpose, I've been reviewing new, new requests, and one in particular jumped out at me. Jumped out at you? It comes from none other than Rambrose of the Sons of St. Koinak. Truly, has something happened in Mordona then? So it would seem, and he wishes to entrust the matter to us. While his missive is sparse on details, he writes that it lies beyond the sun, uh, the sun's ex expertise. Uncharted territory are the exact words he used. I'd like you to meet with Rambrose and conduct a preliminary survey. What say you? Wonderful. When you're ready, pray make your way to Revenant's Toll. I shall let Rambrose know to receive you there. I must remain here to oversee our operations, but should it transpire that more hands are needed, don't hesitate to send word. 
Well, there's no time like the present. If you could go on ahead to Revenant's Toll, I shall make ready and then be on my way. Seacastle says Kryl's Jap Japanese voice actor specifically asked Joji P why Kryl wasn't on the Endwalker package image. What did Joshi P say to that? Because considering how much time she spends in the story, it would make sense, wouldn't it? That she was on it, I mean. There you are, Kaizo. It would seem we are early. My apologies for the wait. Rambrose, what a pleasure to see you again. How have you been? The pleasure's all mine, my friend. I've been well, and it gladdens me to see that you are too. Now, I know you have, ma have many demands upon your time, so I shall explain the particulars of our request at once. Recently, an explorer came to us who claimed to have discovered the Phantom Realm. Ah, uh, is that where people get sent in Yu-Gi-Oh? No, wait, that's the Shadow Realm. The Phantom Realm? So, this is what you meant by uncharted territory. You're not familiar? Perhaps unsurprising, given that it is a lesser-known legend. This legend holds that, across Eorzea, there exists a realm that appears as a mirage. Though visible from a distance, it fades away as one draws near. While it has features in, featured in myth since ancient times, the realm's existence could not be proven, and thus it is seldom mentioned in literature. In spite of this, fueled by rumors of the occasional sighting, the myth has persisted and continues to capture the hearts and minds of explorers. That you yourself should reach out to us? It is real, then? When first the explorer in question approached us, we doubted him, but we couldn't doubt the evidence of our senses. Nay, the realm is real, as you will soon see for yourself. Good gods, a part of me still struggles to believe it, but we have no reason to doubt you. Suffice it to say, we are eager to see the realm too. Whatever truth, whatever truth awaits, I pray you will succeed in finding it. Seek out the explorer, one Derek. He has seen more of the realm than us, and should be willing to serve as your guide. I asked him to accompany me here but he preferred to continue exploring on his own. He will be somewhere near the banks of Silvertier Lake, I expect. Understood. Oh, thanks, Rambrose. Rambrose! The Rambro! <laughs> Phantom Realm is where people end up when they lose in Triple Triad. <laughs> Come, let us split up and look for our explorer. Hey Vicels, yeah, we're doing the Myths of the Realm, which is the Alliance Raid series for Endwalker. You might be sitting there thinking, but haven't you already done that on your main? Yes. Alt. Yoshi P said Kryl was supposed to be standing near Tataru, but he was busy and forgot to write that down for the illustrator. When Yoshi P realized that, the illustration was, was mostly done. Ah, oh, That's really unfortunate. He, would, we, he must have been really busy if he forgot to just write that. The explorer doesn't appear to be in the area. Now you don't say. Hey, Artifice Nero. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, Garsel. Indeed, Vicels. 
Isn't it incredible how I can almost uh, will something into happening, huh? <laughs> I make a video talking about specifically cross the uh, uh, cross uh, world uh, travel or uh, worldwide dates in the travel. A few weeks later, well, some weeks later, something happens. But then again, it's been long enough that I don't, I can't, I obviously, obviously, it's not me. Even though it would be funny if it was, wouldn't it? Can you will Dawn Trail being closer? Probably not. Even though that would be really funny. Myself says my only question will be, will you stream our uh, stream or hang out there? I might. I haven't uh, figured that out yet. I'll say Silverman, hope you're doing well. You see a small Opa Opo. It couldn't possibly be the Explorer. Or could it? And he looks at me, and I look at him. Just in case you were entertaining the thought, Katsu, that Opa Opo isn't our explorer. I have the man in question here with me. I'm Derek, the one who discovered the Phantom Realm. Mm-hmm, discovered, yes, sure. My apologies for making you search for me. Curious about this creature, are you? I found him injured during one of my journeys and tended to him. Since then, he has taken to following me around. He's inquisitive but otherwise harmless, so pray pay him no mind. You're the hero who delivered our star from Doom, are you not? What good fortune that one as capable as you should lend her aid. To be clear, our organization has yet to accept the commission. Before we can make a decision, we would conduct a preliminary survey. Will you guide us to the Phantom Realm? Yes, so first pull out your triple triad cards. <laughs> of course, I will show you to the entrance at once. A gate to a realm long dreamed of by explorers. What are you... Yep, it's right here in the lake. We have to play triple cr triple triad right here. Impressive, isn't it? When the gate manifested, so too did this magic, allowing one to thus walk upon water. This is just like Uriange's spell. Someone conceived the means to do this at will? An intriguing individual. It's perfectly safe, I assure you. Come. Now, walk into the nothing here. Yeah, Uriange's spell works so well, indeed. Just walk forward and you'll disperse into nothingness. It's totally safe. Derek approved. Hmm. By the twelve, you truly can walk here. What magic is this? By what means is it perpetuated? F forgive me. Let us continue on. And 
dead. Just end of story. Welcome to the afterlife! <laughs> this is the Phantom Realm. You must summon her back. Just put a, just, just put up forward a lot of crystals. You know how it goes, as Gaius said. I'm a big guy, the Rhaegar did. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I would probably make a third character at some point for something. That'll probably be a big guy, but which race? To think that the entrance would lie over Silvertier Lake. There's nothing out of the ordinary with the environment. The sights, the sounds, the smells, all appear as they should be in nature. That is to say, this place is no illusion. Guy of moderate stature, which ironically isn't my main. She's only big by relative comparison. Guy of... I bet you're welcome to the navel of the Phantom Realm. The navel? Titan just drops down and just landslides. <laughs> the Omphalos. Slightly less small. Yeah, exactly. Small dragon Kai and small Kai. <laughs> Surprise over Dweller! <laughs> Surprise of a driller, surprise of a driller, surprise of a driller, Titan. <laughs> Indeed, Derby, how did he know what this is called? The Omphalos, you say, this place is called? A name of my own conception, I confess. Aha! I. Then you should have called it something funnier, Derek. I call this. Weird open space land. A name of my own co conception, I confess. I felt we needed something to call it by. Lest you wonder, the word means navel. Surprise, the woodweller. In an ancient tongue, an allusion to Mod Madonna's location in the heart of Aldenard. As you can see, there are man-made structures, and the place appears well-kept, yet there isn't a single soul in evidence. It is my hope that you will help me, sh uh, help me to shed light upon this realm. I don't know, Derek, I feel like there's plenty of light being shed on it already. Are you sure you need our help with that? I, I, I could bring, like, a flashlight. <laughs> to learn who created it. And to what end? I should also like to know why it has been it has revealed itself now. Was it simply chance that kept it hidden, or something more? In any case, let us begin by taking a look around. Imagine if the raids were just three three raids of four separate fights against Titan. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, Overdweller. Welcome to the Omphalos. We can we have cakes and sweets I baked with Ifrit. <laughs> I'm just imagining a Titan with like an apron. Ah, uh, uh, as Ineo says, Omphalos sounds like where the Umbalumpas live. Hmm. 
white and dress in Gilgamesh costume. <laughs> a stone monument has been erected here. By whose hand? You cannot say, but the motives wrought into its base appear familiar. Hmm. Well, this is mine. It doesn't work, everyone. I, th I think there's something wrong with the button. Baker Titan. <laughs> A number of structures such as this can be seen in the area. What purpose could they possibly serve? The architecture is unlike anything seen in Eorzea. Truly exquisite stuff. After Titan carting, Titan cooking, what will he get into next? And that would actually be quite interesting, Silverman, if there was something that happened already this early on. Titan Gaming. Just smash cut to Titan with a gamer headset on. No, Ifrit! Stop buying that loadout! You know it doesn't work! You need to buy it like a big weapon, not just a little handgun or something, and stop buying the flamethrower, for God's sake! For primal's sake, Ifrit, the flamethrower is not a good weapon. You should buy the, um, the grenade launcher. It's kind of like a rock throwing weapon which is good i'm sure meanwhile garuda just a uh, knife running <laughs> in the distance you see what appears to be the crystal tower though the clouds make it difficult difficult to be sure it would seem that you are in the sky above silvertier lake no such isle could be seen from the outside, however. Meanwhile, Susano's Leroy Jenkins hang into combat. <laughs> Rejoice! Finished looking around, have you? What are your impressions? We've had only a cursory glance, but this is truly a mysterious place. The gleaming spire ri rising up beyond the clouds, that is most certainly the crystal tower. And judging by its aspect, we are a considerable distance above Silvertail Lake, which would suggest the gate we entered is a teleporter. Whether if this eye lies where it appears to lie, then it couldn't have ex escaped the Battle of Silvertail Skies unscathed. I mean, that's assuming that this isle was here during that battle. Which is, which is to say we are in Modona, and yet we are not. It's as if we were displaced from our world, if only slightly. Displaced is an apt way to put it. Was there aught else you noticed? Aye, the motives upon yonder structure. They are unmistakably the marks of the Twelve. By which I posit that this was created to be a place of worship. But by whom? I cannot think of any who could have poss possibly built such grand premises. Never mind magically conceal it, at least not in the wake of the Battle of the Sil of Silvertier Skies. Aye, this is a mysterious place indeed. Hmm. 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 
Nice one, dog. Titan, Seiryu, Susano, and Ravana playing Helldivers 2 together. <laughs> I do imagine that both Ravana and Susano, would, whatever game they're playing, they would try to make some sort of melee build work. And it doesn't matter if they lose. They both are just having fun. They both rejoice in the glory of combat. Even if they lose. Well, it seems there's but one solution for our ignorance. A thorough investigation. What? For this, we will require more manpower and supplies, among other things. Whew, for, th for a second, I thought that Small Kai was supposed to start using her brain. With your permission, we will confer with our representative, Kryl, and make the necessary arrangements for our formal investigation. If that is what must be done to commence your work in earnest, then by all means. Without further ado, then, let us return to Charlian. Hold, mortals! Hold it! Objection! Laser! Two balls. I like that one. It is very pink. Now I'll never know which one was the pink one. You are profane. The, you profane the sacred realm with your very presence and must answer for your ir irreverence. The thighs. Look at them. <laughs> He's T-posing. <laughs> he is, actually. He's kind of T-posing. Is that why Byregard is, is Byregard all along actually the scariest of all of them? Because he T-posed on us right at the start? <laughs> I am Byregard, the Builder. By regard, then the twelve are real? Let there be no doubt, we are not simulacra born of mortal faith. Nay, we twelve are divinities true. And in Heidelin's absence, we are the star's rightful rulers, its will. I have a butter knife! <laughs> <laughs> Closely have we watched mankind. And we have determined that you, champion of Hydaelyn, pose a threat to our ascension. You were foolish to wander into our realm. We could destroy you with ease here and now. But as divinities, we must demonstrate grace and forbearance. I still have a butter knife. And then it's true, Vizels. That is exactly what a simulacra would say. We are not simulacra, you see. There is but one path. We must weigh this mortal's worth. Here, here. Let there be a trial. Objection! Hmm. While the mortal would invariably be destroyed, it would at least provide us with a diversion. What? You suddenly appear and expect us to simply comply with your whims? Protest if you wish, but mortal logic means naught to gods. You will abide by our laws. In other words, yes, what will you do about it? Lo, the gateway to our sanctums lies open.
Indeed it does. Show us the strength of mankind. Show us the honor of mankind. Show us the spirit of mankind. If man would remain the master of his own destiny, then as assemble your comrades and come. Come and prove your worthiness. Exactly not the wheel. You could just leave. <laughs> it's also been, like, from Small Kai's perspective, it has been a long time. And the, the gods have just, like, kind of sat there and waited for us. Just waited and waited and waited. Also, hey, Kiraisei. Hope you're doing well. I'm glad to hear that my guys have helped you get started. And welcome to Eorzea. Mia says, why are they so bright? Uh, they put on the wrong filter, I think. Seven hells. During my previous forays, nothing like this ever happened. I encountered not a single soul, and certainly not gods. And by their own admission, they mean to take over the star. What are we to do? Gee, I don't know, Derek. What do you think? Do you think they're actually threatening, Derek? What do you think, Derek? Hmm, Derek? The situation has indeed taken an unexpected turn, but we must try to think clearly. The Twelve have long been revered and worshipped in Eorzea, and myths about them abound. But to my knowledge, they have never thus appeared so openly before people. For, the, for these beings to suddenly reveal themselves just when we're here, claim supremacy over the star, and challenge Kaiser to a trial. Too much about this feels odd, and it gives me pause. Fair enough. Yet, as it stands, it seems we can't dismiss the threat either. Gaius van Baelsa once said that the Twelve Two were simply primals. It is true that even Heidelin and Zodiac were primals, and we cannot dis discount the possibility, but we know too little to draw conclusions. In any event, if these beings seek dominion over the stars, they say, what happens here may have far-reaching implications. To that end, I believe we should take action. Suffice it to say, you're with me. Such devastation! Then the students of Baldesian will officially tend to the situation? Aye, in the course of studying the star's mysteries, we have, undertaken to, we have undertaken to deal with any threats that may arise. This is no different. Hmm, that's very convenient, isn't it, Derek? <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> Knowing what I do know, I, li I, I like to imagine that the reason they suddenly popped out at that specific time was because Grahatia was like, well... I'll have to check with my with the people to see if we can actually do this. So like in the worst case, we might have discovered there was no point to come back. So the gods were like, "No, no, no, wait. <laughs> we're actually very threatening, you see." Wolf's Den Pierre music. Right. Let's let us deliberate a course of action. Derek, know you all of these being sanctums? Aye, they are domains in the Phantom Realm that lie beyond each gate. I've explored them all. How? How, Derek? Weren't they closed? Perhaps due to aetheric instability, there are times when one can enter when ordinarily one cannot. But to what seem the way has been op has been opened for us. Hmm, that's a convenient explanation, yes. A wizard did it. Yeah, indeed, Derby, why is it always Wolf's Den music? Indeed, that's exactly the joke. <laughs> why is it always this one? 
While I encountered no gods during my previous forays, I saw enough to know my way around. I am but a humble explorer and cannot contend with gods, but if you would be willing to protect me, I will serve as your guide. Assemble your comrades. Byregard bade us. As strong as I know you are, we know little and less about our foes, neither their strength nor their true nature. It would be decidedly reckless to contend with them unprepared. And so, as much as I would like to accompany you, I shall do what, uh, do what affords us the best chance at victory. While you set forth to answer the god's challenge, I will work behind the scenes in my capacity as a student, which means I will not be joining you. For one, it would behoove us to arm ourselves with knowledge about the Twelve, and I shall begin by apprising Krile of the situation, which means I'm not even going to be here. By thus utilizing our resources to the fullest, which means not me here, we shall overcome whatever trials await. Sure. Anyway, got a skedaddle. <laughs> uh, Xanad says, what's the myths of the realm? It is the name of the storyline that accompanies the alliance raid for Endwalker. We're doing it with the full story and everything. Um, It might be spoilery if you're new to the game, but if you don't mind that, then, you know, tag along and watch. Um, but yeah, it is an Alliance Raid series, a little bit like in A Realm Reborn, we have the Crystal Tower. <laughs> exactly, my cells got just... <laughs> if this... I'm out. Brum, brum, brum. Well, we're six. We're only six. Do we do we have friends? Is uh, Tuxar here also in the stream? Or are they just hanging out randomly? Game wants you to, to do PvP. I do wonder, did the song that plays in Wolves Den Pierre get used in the MSQ first, or did it appear in Wolves Den Pierre first? Well, Sip is, in, uh, is on Alpha. He probably wouldn't be here just for no reason. So I'll invite him. Arkney, do you want to come along? Since I can see you're also on. Right. Well, we have we have a full party. We won't be able to make a 24-man group, unfortunately. And the way that the alliance raids work, it's uh, all or nothing in that regard. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I was basically saying the same thing. I can't. I can't. I don't think. I don't think we can get a full 24 players. And yes, Ardell, uh, Orkney is a uh, Fina white scale. Uh, the the profile picture matches between uh, YouTube and Discord. <clears throat> also, hey boat, hope you're doing well. 
The quest that got me from always having a baby Opa Opa minion to buying a baby Opa Opa plushie IRL. The Opa Opa made a big impact, I see. And let me just do another ready check. And the important thing, Vysels, is that uh, this uh, DC travel coming where we can all visit uh, Oceania is uh, a test. So it, it has an end date. And if the test doesn't go well, then the test probably doesn't lead to anything bigger immediately. Yeah, but it is a test. There's also the possibility that they conclude that uh, it's a bad idea. If the test doesn't go well, they cancel Dawn Trail. <laughs> you know what? Doesn't work. Let's just scrap it all. Just delete the game. Couldn't do cr worldwide tra travel, so just, just delete everything. Who's this cat boy? I don't know. I tried to see if they would respond when I... Uh, like name dropped them um they didn't it didn't seem like they responded in the in the stream chat so i don't know oh it was you i thought you were on na you're you're in two places I can actually see that now, yeah. <laughs> Who's that cat boy? A dog! <laughs> oh, now we're getting to the bottom of things. Yeah, whatever happens with this um, uh, worldwide data center uh, travel test, Whatever happens, we will see um we we will at least have chaos in OZ, right? Yeah, um a dog, if you want to come along, it looks like if you queue for Aglaya now, you will probably land in the same run as us. But that is of course optional. A dog says, I'm thinking I'm going out for food with my parents. Okay, fair enough. Then let's just leave the group as it is now. Yeah, OZ is going to be chaos for a while. I, I do believe other people mentioned that then when there was the cloud ser cloud server test, that things got pretty wild. This time, instead of just like one-time characters where you had to like unlock the things you want to meme with, we're actually using our mains. I wonder how much chaos will happen in OZE. Green says, I thought chaos was an EU. Well, yeah, but you see... Chaos will also be visiting OCE, so we'll bring the chaos, don't you worry. Chaos will follow. Yeah, 
<laughs> one brings chaos, one brings the light. Incidentally, both are EU. Isn't that weird? Isn't that strange? Which is strange, is it not? Q time, Q time. Here's a funny story. If I remember correctly, uh, you've foreseen the second, the second part of this Alliance Raid series came out, as I recall, at the same time as the Paladin rework. Because of that, I had decided that I was going to play Paladin on patch day, but at that time, which I did. Um, for most of the things that happened that day, it wasn't a major issue that I was Paladin, but if I remember correctly, the queue time for you for seen as a Paladin, even though you brought like a DPS with you or something, was still like 40 minutes <laughs> on patch day. Because there was a lot of paladins. Never says, remember in the lie when pets were booked and couldn't deal with Salix not ba knockback? You mean Limlane's knockback? And I think it's still. Bugged in so far that if you fly if you get pushed too far away your pet might despawn, but you can you can Do workarounds like sending your pet in the correct direction in advance if you're a scholar and if you're a summoner Usually the Kabi will run with you fast enough that it doesn't despawn But yeah, it is still a thing like, it's, it's not a bug, it's just that you get thrown so far away that that is actually the despawn range <laughs> for pets. Weirdly. Why do I hear boss music? It's the queue very slowly approaching. Oh, that's you up there, is it? <laughs> yeah, the name matches. Yazzle says, I think I will have to time dissipation for that mechanic. Heal didn't help. I'm pretty sure that I, when I did my scholar-only hangout stream not too long ago, the way I dealt with the limb lane knockback was that I just commanded um, my pet to like walk like part ways down that, uh, that pathway in advance so that when I got knocked back, my pet was still in range. It's not optimal, but you can do something about it. And the, the benefit being that that uh, walkway is visible and interactable in advance. So you can like, you see first the walk appear, then you just send your pet down there and then you get knocked back. But yeah, there are ways to deal with it, at least for Scholar, because you have that, like, finer control over your pet. It might be harder for Summoner, because of how, like, I don't actually know what happens, because I, I can't remember ever doing it as Summoner, come to think of it. Thalaya, I mean. Ooh, 
wouldn't it be hilarious if we end up sitting in queue for Aglaia longer than we did when we were trying to do the near raids? Himia says, what's with all the cat boys today? I, I don't know. I feel like uh, that, like, uh, over time, we've had a severe lack of cat boys on small Kai streams. We've had periods where we had, like, where if you if you just took small Kai uh, at face value, you'd think that the Ellison was the most popular race in the game. And other times, we have this. We have uh, two Ellison, a Viera, two Lalafells, two Catboys, uh, let's see, one small dragon and one cat girl. This is a really weird mix, isn't it? Almost there! Almost! No row presentation. Yeah. Wasn't uh, Regadin the most uh, or the least common race in the game? Rip Krothka. I think a few months ago we had a period where we often had two Rothka in in in, in, in the small Kai lineup. And actually we have two small dragons. I don't know how I missed one of them. Is that how you pronounce Regadin? That's how I pronounce Regadin. I don't actually know how you're supposed to pronounce it. It could be Rugadin. But then again... Then again, many Regadin names sound like, uh, you know, like this. When you read them. <laughs> you had three or four elves at some point during the Dark Knight leveling. That sounds about right, yeah. Regadin names sound like RMT bots. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I certainly sometimes have that, uh, like, a little bit of a case of, could, would you like to borrow a vowel? <laughs> Silverman says, only the sea wolves, if they're hell's guard, then they just take their name from My Little Pony. Because they have descriptive names? Except for the most powers, uh, power scion, a man who could honestly solo all of Endwalker. Hori Boulder. <laughs> You're a boulder, Hori. I'm a what? You're a boulder. Apparently. Did we... Did I look at this wrong? Or did we lose two healers and gained one DPS? Curious, Curious George. There we go. Here he says, aren't Seawolf and Hellsgard names technically basically the same except for language? I don't know, but they do have distinctly different, like, styles of names. It's the same as, um... Like, Mikote, depending on which kind of Mikote it is, their names and conventions are very different. The way they live is very different. It's also like small dragons, right? That's why we have Fishra uh, for the white ones, because they tend to live underwater.
So it does matter. You have silly names for Hellsguard like Still River, Spinning Blade, and <laughs> Bloody Catapult. Yeah, it'll be a bloody catapult. The mistake there is that it isn't a trebuchet. Gah, they, bl they brought a bloody catapult. Why didn't they bring up trebuchet? It would have been way better. Especially if you have to throw a how much is it? <laughs> and how long is it? I guess I'll save this for uh, Thal uh, Thalaya. We have one tank who's already activated their tank stand, so maybe maybe I'll just let them do it. Scatter! Scary and scatter. Wait, we had someone die? I think around here. Behold the, of the Behold the virtuosity of the builder. You know, you could have brought less tight pets by regard. <laughs> you consider that one. No? Fair enough. It's your choice. Maybe, maybe this is exactly how your your uh, your believers want to see you. They need to see those games. You th you think you think it's uh, by regard the builder because he built stuff. It's actually it's because he he built those games. He's actually it's actually by regard the bodybuilder. It's going to push to the right. Oh boy. I don't feel like that counted, or apparently the game did. Don't worry, second boss has Ralga upskirting on you when he does his punch attack. <laughs> oh boy, I'm sure that uh, them in Ralga's reach uh, are really uh, appreciating that one. Oh, he's already dead? He's already dead. A lot of mechanics we didn't get to see. We're too powerful. Zab, the Titan's almost as big as Byregard. Hmm. But first, fight this. 
I served with some sport. He's always ho he's already halfway dead. Is there actually a, an ice level sink on this one? Looking at my HP, I don't think there is. That would explain why the, these guys are getting pummeled so hard. Nope, just a minimum. You boy. You always have summons on small? I I believe I have that on my main as well. I just haven't bothered to change it on small kai and it hasn't gotten in my way yet. But it's, it's fine enough, so I haven't bothered. I made this. It didn't really include my hair in it, but it's close enough. Exactly, Nero. That that is kind of what. This is also part of the reason why a lot of like max level content feels so easy at the moment is because a lot of it doesn't sink you down very far, not that far. So it makes it way easier. Like as w when we did um, Pandemonium, minimum item level, uh, like the first and seconds here uh, two weeks ago. When we did Phoenix, we discovered that a tank has nearly half, not exactly, like a, like a 10k difference, but actually like, or maybe like 5k difference, but minimum item level, you lose like half of your HP as a tank. Something to that effect. It's quite insane. And I also noticed that uh, the... Um, if you do the, uh, like, ice metal, uh, 560, um, stone sky sea striking dummies, generally speaking, they require you to do around half of the DPS that they expect you to do at, like, in, in, like, P12S, which, again, means that the DPS of players has approximately doubled over the course of the expansion. So, something like Aglaia, where they just let you go in as you are, it's a lot easier than you'd think. Ah! It's quite interesting when you see like a tank buster on a tank and you see the DPS and healer standing next to the tank just kind of stand there like, what are you going to do about it? And they don't move until a few seconds later when they realize the tank isn't going to do anything about it. That's your problem. <laughs> yep, Nevo, you can actually very easily skip scales on not all. Um, I've seen scales in current patch i have seen it happen but it was something where you could like see it coming from a mile away like 
the previous bosses were dying slow and things like that. Like, it was really obvious that uh, there was something else. It can happen. I have seen it. <coughs> but it is rare. Yeah, exactly, Zap. That is kind of also the the reason why my perspective on the whole whole issue is, on the one hand, it sucks a bit that you don't get to see it much. On the other hand, it does remove the potential griefing possibilities. Although, I feel like intentionally phasing out a mechanic like that because people can be mean and mess it up intentionally it's a weird reason to do that so it's more like an accidental band-aid fix you could say And for those that don't know what we're talking about, basically on the scales, you have to spread your entire, like the entire lines rate in a specific way. And sometimes the weights split up happens to be so perfect that one person can just switch side and then make it uneven. And the mechanic is like a, uh, a yes or no kind of mechanic. Like if you do it correctly, then you proceed to the next mechanic and you get a damage boost. If you do it wrong, you wipe. And that's it. Like that's that's it. That's all she wrote. You just wipe. And one person with too much time on their hands could just like f swap sides in the last second before you get stopped, like frozen in place. And then everyone wipes, and you've wasted time for 23 players. It's rare. Like, obviously, most people, like, most sane people wouldn't even consider doing that. But there are people that think it's really funny. It is kind of funny. But, uh... Then you remember that uh, you wasted 23 players time and then it's no longer funny. I feel like this mechanic normally happens super early in the fight, but the boss is already near half HP. Three, four, or five, four. If those interested, as far as I know, the fans will always only move four or five times. Like the, that's not particularly helpful because that still leaves two possible configurations. But it does help that you know that when it says four, you know that if they, it keeps going, the next one is where they stop. So you just have to think about what happens once it hits four.
Let there be fire. Does it actually always stop at the same spot, Silvermint? I feel like the one in Thalea can stop in two different spots the same way. Like it's either four or five, but I've never paid enough, like close enough attention to know whether that is actually the case or I've just assumed so because this version does that. Says maybe it just got lucky five weeks in a row. I mean, <laughs> it is a possibility. That's what I call Square Enix RNG. It's also po like it is absolutely possible that it is just a case of you've never seen it play out in any other way. Don't judge me, bro. It is absolutely possible that uh, that you've just been incredibly lucky, unlucky with a mechanic. Sometimes it's also a case of, oh, this particular configuration of the mechanic only happens the second time it comes up. That's not the case with the fans in that situation, but it's more the principle of the matter. Like, for example, um... The Durante fight in Lunar Subterrain... As far as I've seen, it is not possible for the safe spot, you know, when he does the split the orbs thing, it is not possible for the safe spot to be in the middle the first time he casts it. It's not possible. But the second time he casts it, like later in the fight, it can be that the center is the safe spot. Now, the problem there is that your average expert roulette group kills him before he does it a second time. So, if you've never seen it cast a second time and someone tells you, Oh yeah, it can sometimes be the middle that's the safe spot. You might say, no, it never is. Which was actually my exact experience. And then, one day I had a group that actually uh, took long enough that we reached the second one. I was like, oh, indeed, it was the center that was the safe spot. Wouldn't you know? Hey, Arya. Hope you're doing well. It's always a little spooky when the people with the chase AOE pot pot potential mechanic decides to stack with everyone else. Because you don't know for sure if they'll actually move if the boss changes. Like if he swaps mode. So that can cause other players to choose to not stack out of fear. And then the stack marker becomes dangerous as a result. And for that reason, usually if I get the chase AOE thing, I'll just move away. Just to be sure. Even though there's no need to. Blam. Hey, Travers. Hope you're doing well. 
Well, I, I feel like this is going well. Assuming that things don't take way longer in the second and third... Uh, third chapter of this story. I think we'll make it tonight. Also, uh, you thought I was tank. I've... The only thing I've done as a tank in this run has been uh, taking shared tank busters. Other than that, I've just been a glorified DPS. I haven't even turned on my tank stance. <laughs> I have no need for tank stances. And the second time he flips... Eight percent, and he hasn't started the intimation uh, start up yet. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> will will you will you weather this limit break? <laughs> okay, you will. Fair enough. Will you weather this soul eater? No chat overlay. Apparently, the chat overlay broke. Hey, James. Hope you're doing well. We are excited for the uh, cross-regional travel test. Um, not sure what we'll do about it yet, but um, it is interesting. Also, hey, Cyanide. Hope you're doing well. Well, I'm sorry that uh, your situation hasn't been good. Uh, the stream has been going well, at least. <gasps> a coin! Wow! To so upgrade gear that I can't afford anyway on this character. And that makes sense, Zip. A an LB1 also isn't like the most uh, crucially important to rush out. Is that coin edible? Maybe. It looked edible, didn't it? You're safe, thank goodness. I rushed here as soon as I heard the tidings from Raha. Is this true? Beings claiming to be the Twelve have appeared? You defeated them all? Incredible. I had no doubt that you would succeed, but I'm no less impressed for it. Ha 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 ha. Seldom have I felt such exhilaration. Is Ralga the pink one? I feel like the way that, that they position themselves. They're not making... Okay, so he's the middle left one. Is it Ralga? No, by regard is the pink one. Why, of course, he would be the pink one with how manly the color pink is. Don't you all agree? <laughs> of course, he would be the pink one. <laughs> nice. I, I guess I should now consider whether I should look into changing my deity. <laughs> Why is your deity by regard? Oh, well, you see, he's the pink orb in in the Omphalos. So, I mean, it says, fun, fun fact, pink used to be a man's color in the 1800s. Anemia says kind of the same thing. That is pretty funny. I think I've heard about that before, yeah. To think that the day would come that we would put on an act for men. I must say, by regard, you played the villain's role to perfection. You have to do a Byregard cosplay now. I feel like that would require me to go to the gym more. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
Come now, master. I merely did what was necessary to compel the mortals to confront us. <sighs> Still, it pained me to speak to our beloved children so unkindly. Azima, did you not... Azima, did you, were you not the one who was saying, I'm kind of warming up to you? I feel like you weren't very mean. I'll finance that. <laughs> so you say, Azima, yet you seemed happy enough to fight them. You did not forget the true purpose of the trial, I hope. Well, I couldn't help but be excited, and do not tell me you felt differently. Consider yourselves fortunate, children. Tis rare indeed to see Nald Thal in such high spirits. What in the world is happening? Didn't you just say, didn't you say you had defeated them? Did they manage to flee, or perhaps were resummoned? I have a butter knife! Put up your weapons. You have naught to fear from us. Us who threatened you mere 30 minutes ago. Rest assured, we are not summoned beings. We do not drain the land of either, nor do we take men into our thrall. Oh! Well, that's absolutely not something that, uh, that, an, in that a primal would say. But what of the gods who were summoned during the Calamity? See you soon, Emir. The ones Master Louisois called forth to protect the realm. That was not us, but a primal born of your fervent prayers for salvation. Indeed, that the worst of the calamity was averted and the realm restored in its aftermath was a direct testament to the power of your hopes. Do you truly intend to rule the world? Everyone knows if you ask a being if they're a primal, they legally have to tell you. Myself says, what great sword is that one? Looks pretty nice. That's the level 89 Dark Knight weapon that you can just grab uh, from Tataru. Just, it's dyed pink. It's very pink. Like, it almost looks like a toy sword in, in that bright pink, doesn't it? Just as men have our hopes, so too do we gods. To realize our aspirations, it is essential that we do battle with you. Thus did I falsely claim that we sought to rule the world. It was deceitful con conduct unworthy of a divinity, and I must apologize. Not only for that, but for using my power to do harm besides. These hopes of yours, won't you tell us what they are? No, Lamau. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot. If you wish to know the truth, you must discover it for yourselves. It is not easy to move forward when there is seemingly no destination, but if you press on, you will eventually arrive at the answers you seek. Aye, you will understand why we hold our peace, and far more besides. You will learn the very truth of our existence. Go forth, mortals, and seek knowledge of us. And when the time is right, we shall meet again in this place. It is a toy sword, small guy. It's just that strong. <laughs> Maybe it's just that she's that cute. She just smacks enemies and they're like, oh, oh, I have to look like I'm being hurt. Otherwise, uh, she'll be sad. Meanwhile, her weapon actually just like makes squeaky noises as she swings. Like, like uh, blood spiller. Squeak, 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 squeak. As if hearing about your battling the Twelve weren't shocking enough to have them appear before my very eyes. Suffice it to say, it's been an interesting day. 
While much about them remains shrouded in mystery, at least they seem open to reason. In considering our next step, I should very much like to hear your detailed account of them. Right, right after I have a, I have a word with our client, that is. Please give me a moment to introduce myself and then we can review the situation. We're an old board and a little bit a little bit senile. Let us have fun for once. <laughs> Greetings. I'm Kryle of the Students of Baldesian. Do I have the pleasure of addressing Derek, the explorer who sought aid in investigating this place and absolutely doesn't already know all about it beforehand? That one? Yes, this is Derek. Hi, <laughs> I am Derek. And this here is a baby Oba Obo. Yes, I can see that. Doesn't it have a name? Not that I know of, nor would I presume to bestow one, for that would be condescending. I see. That's very considerate of you. So, I understand you explored the various Phantom Realms with Derek. Will you recount to me the experience? So, while the gods tested you sorely, you did not sense any malicious intent. As Byregard said, they wish to, to do battle with us, but it would seem they do not necessarily wish to cause us harm. Hey, Matsoro, hope you're doing well. Though much and more about this perplexus, mayhap it is safe to assume that they, do, they are not primals. As you may recall, Living Way once told us that the art of summoning, as taught by the Asians, incorporates the fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Thus do the resultant primals seek to enthrall worshippers, who in turn seek to grow their ranks. But these beings appear to harbor no such desire, if they are primals, then they are unli unlike those that have been summoned in recent memory. We might suppose that they were created in antiquity in like manner to Heidelin, but there is no way to prove it. Who could they possibly be, and why do they desire battle with man? Even if you're little Eor even of your little Eorsia, you know precious little. The true identities of the twelve, for instance. Emmet Selk did, did say that, didn't he? By which we may assume he knew the truth, and challenged you to seek it out too. Suffice it to say, you'll do so, of course. Insofar as we can ascertain, this is a matter which has implications for the entire star. In light of this, the students of Baldesian formally accept the commission. We will investigate the Phantom Realm and the beings who call themselves the Twelve. I'm pleased to hear that. Thank you! Without further ado then, I will take a look around. There are a few things I'm curious about. Then, with your permission, I will take myself around Eorzea and investigate the, the worship of those gods we encountered. Katsu, Derek, seeing as you've already seen this place, would you care to accompany me? That sounds like a really long quest, Grazi, yeah? By all means, in which case... Could you stay here with Kryl, my friend? It wouldn't do to leave a fair maiden alone. Ok, ok. Ooh, opo, opo, get. <laughs> I shall be glad, uh, glad for the company. Take care then, and good luck. Divine instructions unclear. I ate all my job crystals. <laughs> so, to explain my plan. 
It is believed that the Twelve were already worshipped during the Third Astral Era when the Alagan Empire flourished. Come the Fifth Astral Era, those nations that fought in the War of the Magi each took one of the Twelve as a guardian deity. This practice has continued to the present day in Eorzea, with some notable regional differences. For instance, Ishgardians hold Haloni as absolute, while Charlians enjoy a moderate relationship with Thaliac. By visiting various locations in Eorzea and learning about the Twelve as they are worshipped, I hope to identify any similarities or differences between them and the beings we encountered. In so doing, I believe we will draw closer to the truth of their identities. For our first destination, I propose we take ourselves to Ralga's Reach, the place's holy ground for worshippers of the Destroyer, and promises to yield useful details. Green says, wait, you didn't even include Gran in your catboy count earlier. No, because I was only counting people that were actually, like, part of the party. And at last I checked, Graha ran for the hills. He wasn't even there. He was basically like, oh, you're going into, a, in, into an alliance raid? Well, oh boy, have you seen the time? <laughs> You're late. There you are, kind sir. This place served as the base of operations for your investigation into Omega, did it not? How delightful to be here together. I guess you wouldn't say that if you haven't done the Omega Raids. If you don't mind my, my making an observation, it seems you enjoy traveling with company. I do. It's something I dreamed of for a long time. That's nothing like traveling with good friends. Like my small army that I bring everywhere. Is that so? What of yourself? Do you normally travel alone? Aye, in my wanderings, I much prefer, prefer to have solitude. Not that I avoid people or communities, mind you. As a matter of fact, I've been here before, on the trail of the Phantom Realm. Hmm, now that I think on it... More often than not, those places where Phantom Realm sightings are known to occur have a tradition of Twelve worship. Then I dare to hope we are on the right track. As I'm sure you know, Ralga's Reach is home to the Temple of the Fist, the ancient headquarters of the Fist's Fist of Ralga. Raised, raised by the Mad King the Theodoric, the temple lay abandoned by, before the Alamegan Resistance claimed it for its operations. While I doubt that much literature has survived over the years, the people here may possess some knowledge of the local faith. So let us split up and make inquiries, and reconvene here afterwards to share findings. Oh, there's a finding right here. Not, not. Hello? You read the words inscribed on the monument. The storm of blood approaches fast. Hells open, heavens weep. For no one's one soul doth lie beyond the me measure of his reach. Once upon a time, Lee's explained to you their meaning, that we must prepare ourselves for the strife and sorrow that will inevitably come. Temple of the Blade. Well, actually, there are uh, monks of the Blade inside the Temple of the Fist. They're not called that, but it's basically monks using swords. Oh, if it isn't Kaitsu, is this man perchance a friend of yours? When last he visited, he shared with me the tales he heard on his journey. Journeys, and what amazing tales they were. If you have time, I'd love to hear both of your stories. Alas, we're in some haste. We're investigating the worship of Ralga and seek literature on the subject, religious texts and the like. Can any still be found here? 
Just about all of it is gone, sadly. Destroyed by the Empire, if not the Mad King before that. But we haven't lost everything. The mighty image of the Destroyer. The tales we share at the campfire. Like the legend of our nation's founding. We still have these things, and they were a source of great comfort and strength to us in our darkest moments. I see. If you don't mind, I would be obliged to hear your stories this time. Wait. Katsu, rest assured I have this well in hand. Feel free to carry on as you were. You don't want you don't want to hear this boring nonsense anyway, do you? Mm hmm Running around the world. Hmm. A little road trip over there. Yes? If you have business, please make it quick. I'm due to meet with someone any moment now. Forgive me my delay, someone said from off-screen. Hmm? You're an adventurer, I take it. What can we students of Alamegan history do for you? Researching the worship of the Destroyer, you say? In that case, I have something that ought to be of interest. This speck of dust. This is a copy of Destructivity, a scripture of the Fist of Ralka. It's very small, as you can see. The original is one of the few texts that survived the temple's raising, and is in the safekeeping of one Professor Eric. Well, we had best return to our work. Till next time, adventurer. You just happen to have that on hand? How convenient. Yeah, one millimeter small book. It is funny whenever they, like, hand you a thing. And it's, like, it they just don't have anything appear in your hand, so you're just, like... Thanks? Like, I can't read this. It's apparently a book so small that I can have it in my hand and you can't even see it. Like, one thing is that that can happen, right? Like, that, that can happen. But it's extra obvious and weird when they actually sometimes hand you a physical object you can actually see be handed over. Which makes it weirder when they don't make an object appear. Katsu, what were you able to learn? I found a book! Plot twist, it simply says... Pineapple. That, yes, that is the fruit of sacrifice! The pineapple. A copy of one of the scriptures, you say? A moment while I skim over it. Yes, I magnified it by holding it, as you can see, Gra. I see. This chapter appears to be a record of the construction of the great image of Ralga, written in a style that suggests folklore was committed to parchment. When the deluge of the sixth umbral calamity threatened Neosia, the ancestors of the Elamegans Elam were guided to safety by a comet. Believing that it was sent by Ralga, they came to hold him in the highest. There's much of the tale I had been familiar with. But according to the scripture, among those refugees who followed the comet, some claim to have caught sight of Ralga himself. Their accounts were passed down through the centuries, and worshippers of the destroyer pieced them together to give shape to yonder statue. Apparently they missed that he also had like, long flowing locks of hair. Must say, it bears more than a passing resemblance to the being we encountered. Were that, were that Ralga a primal, were that Ralga a primal, the explanation for the similar similarities would be simple. 
That is, the statue gives rise to, an, to a unified interpretation of Raoka's appearance, which in turn lends form to the primal. However, this fails to account for what inspired the likeness in the first place. If the scripture is to be believed, it was the sightings during the, it was the, sightings during the sixth umbral calamity. Yet, for those witnesses to be able to recognize Ralga, they would have needed an agreed-upon idea of his appearance beforehand. If we then consider the history of Twelve Worship, that it already existed in the Third Astral Era, it would not be ridiculous to think that these divinities existed even prior to that. Hmm. Small Kai like, let me see if I can find the two brain cells and make them meet. So the question is, do these beings give, beings give rise to their respective faiths, or are they primal spawn of them? Are they primal spawn of them? I thought we had made it clear. We are not summoned beings. <coughs> Nani? Since time immemorial. <laughs> Since time immemorial. <laughs> Since time immemorial, Squawk, our domains have lain scattered across Eosia. As a matter of fact, one of those in which you set foot is nearby. It is not unusual for mortals to glimpse us. That voice, could they be? Indeed, I am Byrigot, and the hawk beside me is Ralga. I shall elaborate upon my master's explanation. We thus disguise ourselves when we wish to observe the world without, for being seen in our true forms would violate our laws of conduct. Yet, though we, ha we similarly disguise our sanctums, veiling them in illusion. Rents, rents are known to manifest when, when the surrounding ether is unstable. In such a time, should a gifted mortal chance to be near, they may inadvertently catch sight of us. Of course. During an umbral calamity, etheric imbalance occur occurs on a star-wide scale, the ideal condition for, being, for, for seeing the Phantom Realm. Precisely, Squawk. Ha precisely how many times we've been seen, we ourselves have no way of knowing, Squawk. But I, that is a sound assumption to make. Well, by regard, I believe that much should suffice by way of an apology for our deception. Shall we? Indeed, that is all we have. We are at liberty to reveal. Fare you well, children of man. Son of man. The twelve are fond of pineapple cake, specifically. Hmm. Yum. Aside from, their re uh, aside from their reticence where it concerns their identity and objective, these divinities are certainly ap approachable. If what they said was true, and their worship can be traced back to their sightings, it would serve to explain one thing. According to my research, in the field of co comparative mythology, Ralga is often observed to bear many similarities with Ramu. Assuming both were inspired by the, Ra by the Ralga of the Phantom Realm, their divergence may be attri attributable to differences in culture between man and sylph. That's a really good point. So you believe that they, ga that they gave rise to the prevailing faiths of Eosia? Given available evidence, yes, I am inclined to. Yet, none of this explains their presence. How and when did beings of such power come into existence? Oh, tis you, Kryle. Has something happened? Truly, very well. I shall take care of it. It's incredibly interesting. Shame you two can't hear it. 
Krylas recruited an acquaintance to aid in our investigation, an authority on mythology. I must go and retrieve and receive her at the sunken temple of Khan, where she is currently conducting fieldwork, after a brief detour to prepare. A little... something. Conveniently, Thanalan is home to countless ad adherents of Nalthal. While I attend to business, may I ask the two of you to make inquiries in Uldar? Very well. Excellent. I will join you as soon as I'm able. By your leave. That is an interesting point that Ralga is potentially also what inspired Rameau. Trial got grass pizza delivered to her by. Yeah! Ah, my pizza! <laughs> so, it's it's to be just you and me in Ulda. Yeah, I suppose it can't be helped. What strange manners for the one who proposed the survey to so promptly abandon it. I'll not lie, I'm not given to working one on one with another, but I suppose I agreed to this arrangement. <sighs> well, we had best be on our way. As I recall, Milvaneth Sacrarium is still closed for construction, so let us try our luck at Arzaneth Ossuary. You have no objections to travelling separately, I trust? Good. I shall see you in Uldar. It is interesting if if Ralga inspired the Sylphs about Ramu. Does that mean all of the primals is like this? In which case Who did they did they see that inspired Titan? And Ifrit and Garuda. Like just just out of curiosity. How did they come up with those? Ah, you're here. Of the Davic twins, Nald Thal. Here they worship Thal, who keeps the realm of the dead and weighs the worth of men's souls. In contrast, Nald keeps the world of the living and oversees their financial fortunes. The names are borne by many a location and religious organizations, some extremely wealthy and powerful. The names are borne by many a location and religious organizations, some extremely wealthy and powerful, exist to nurture faith in them. On the surface, it may seem strange that a hub of commerce such as Uldar could be home to such spiritual people, but it is actually quite logical when one considers that their religion is, in essence, commerce. In any event, Nalthal is a truly unusual divinity. What was originally held to be one god came to be worshipped as worshipped as twins. Indeed, rather than two distinct entities, that which we encountered was a single being possessed of two personalities. Excuse me? Did did, did I miss here? Did he just say they encountered Nalthal? And while his appearance differs somewhat to the divinities worshipped, it cannot be denied that there are striking similarities in their nature. Perhaps we should avoid talking about that here. Forgive me, this is hardly the place for such a conversation. Let us continue it elsewhere. And let's not explain anything to these people that were very confused, by the way. Simplement says, I just got through the layer and I'm either going to win every lottery I ever enter or it's fixed to four spins on the fans. It is possible that it is fixed to four spins. It is possible. If you want some more data on that, Silvermint, remember that for months, like actually months, I finished 
every dailies hangout stream with doing Thalea. So you could just, you know, check each of those streams and just go in and go, ah, four, then next one, huh, four, next one, huh, four. Like, you could check, like, a dozen of them at this point, I think. And that way you would be able to go, you would be able to have not only your own data, but also mine. Green says, some Amalja was very drunk when they saw Nalthal or Azima. I guess maybe if Freed is like Azima, but very, but a guy was very drunk when they saw him. It could also be Nalthal. And like, he just like kind of saw the seat. It could be Null because he has like horns on him, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure he has like horns and he has like a very slim chest because of the weird construction he is. So like that, that could match with the silhouette of Ifrit, couldn't it? It was careless of me to openly speak of our encounter with the divinity within a place where he is worshipped. Here on, I shall exercise greater caution. I thank you for alerting me to my indiscretion and ask that you keep it between us. Now then, to finish our conversation, as I mentioned, though though the Nalthalas worshipped by men appears somewhat different, there are undeniable similarities in their nature. I believe we may report this much to Gratia. With that, our work here is done. Rather than waiting for our companion to arrive, perhaps we might seek him out at the sunken temple. He mentioned needing to make a detour, where we to set out now, we ought to be able to catch up to him. After all, we hardly know one another. Rather than loiter with an unfamiliar person, it is better to use our time productively. Wouldn't you agree? Then let us head to the Sunken Temple of Khan at once. Nezala says Leviathan resemb resembles Limlane serpents? That also makes sense, yeah. Green says Azima is associated with the sun, and if Ifrit arises from an eclipse, could there be a potential link there, maybe? Yeah, that could also match. By regard could also be confused for Titan by a drunk kobold. That could be. The reason why I'm extra confused about by regard is because Titan is an earth element, and by regard is a thunder element. So it would be one of the Earth Elements, but which ones are Earth Elements? Isn't... Actually, isn't Ulthic one of the Earth ones? Or what is it there? Uh. You're here, thank goodness. I found this woman collapsed. Though I can see no obvious injuries, by her attire she appears to be some manner of scholar. Water, food, my bag, please. I see. Katsu, may I trouble you to find her back? I will stand lookout in the meantime. I, who is just some explorer, you go. You who cannot defend, uh, you who could actually defend her if she needed it. Nofika and Ulfika. Maybe, maybe they mistook Nofika's Nofika's for muscles and they came up with Titan? <laughs> Examining the bag, you find a skin with a little water left, but there appears to be no pro provender. And now you decide to take the water to the woman. It could also be that they just kind of heard stories about all thick and they went, Aha! He must be really thick and wide! And then they came up with Titan. So thirsty, so hungry. Uh, even an incurable optimist would feel compelled to say that this water skin is nearly empty. Not enough food. I need food. I have not saved dried meat, tough as leather. Do we have anything easier to consume?
Katsu, Derek, what are you doing here? Actually, that can wait. Steady, Snorgheim. I brought you Archon Loaf and Coffee, made sweet and creamy, just as you like it. Ah, I am reborn. Washed down with a sweet beverage, the life-giving nutrients of Archon Loaf permeate my being from head to toe. Thank you, kind stranger. However you knew my preferred source of sustenance, you are truly a godsend. Oh! It's you, Raha. What brings you here? I don't recall mentioning my fieldwork. It's, it's for my research into the Beladians' worship of Asima, you see. I said easier to consume. <laughs> I, I have this. Small Kai, that's a crystal. Yes? Are you serious? No? I guess I'll just eat it myself then. <laughs> Haven't you heard from Kryle? The students are presently investigating the Twelve and we would prevail upon your expertise. May I, may I introduce Snowgain? Expert mythologist. She's a collaborator of the students, and like many a Shaolian scholar, is passionate about her endeavors to the point of forgetting to eat. Seeing as she has recovered, may I ask the two of you to tell her about the Phantom Realm? Well, you see, Snowgain, bring out your triple triad cards. Are you ready? To be sent to the sh to the fa I mean the Phantom Realm. The twelve abide in the Phantom Realm, and you exchanged not only words with them but blows besides. Incredible! And your description of the remains, a thunderous tower in one and a sweltering city in another, are precisely the he as the heavens of lightning and fire depicted in legend. In ancient times, worshippers of the twelve believed that there exist seven heavens and seven hells. Aetherology has since established that departed souls return to the ethereal sea. But it seems those afterlife domains were more than just inventions of mortal imagination. As a pursuer of myths, I must say it feels somewhat anticlimactic to suddenly have these revelations given to me. But more than that, I'm dying to know more, which is to say, Please allow me to join your investigation. Um, we would, of course, welcome your presence. Without further ado, then, let us head to the Omphalos. Ryle awaits us there. It is quite funny with uh, this Alliance Raid series that... If I remember correctly, in all three alliance raids, the way it plays out is that you take the quest, you do like a relatively small amount of story, like surprisingly small amount of story, and then it's raid time. And then there's like a massive aftermath of quests, which leads to this weird situation where... If you just, like, go, oh, I just want to do the Alliance Raid, then when the next tier came out, you had a huge amount of catch-up to do, and you might even be like, I don't remember where the quest proceeded from. Like, if you stopped doing the quest from here, right? Oh, I already did the Alliance Raid. Maybe you even abandoned the quest. You just have to remember where it is. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome, Snowgain. I'm glad you could. I'm glad you could join us. Kryl, how delightful to see you again. I understand you've been doing a fine job leading the students. 
but may I say what a lovely place this is. At a glance, this appears to be the highest of the heavens of legend, the seventh heaven. And who, if those aren't symbols representing the other heavens? I take it those are their respective gate uh, gateways. I should like to pay them all a visit. For Snowgheim's benefit, let us review what we've learned thus far, and then celebrate the next step. And then Grantia explained what we knew so far. And then, a while later, we returned to see our heroes. Gratia in desperate need for a glass of water after that talking. The gods reappeared before Zenralga's reach. No, they were disguised as unassuming creatures. Their laws forbid them from showing their true forms outside their realm. Yet in the event yet in the event the ambient ether becomes unstable, such as during an umbral calamity, it is possible for the realm, and indeed the gods themselves, to be glimpsed by mortals. And such sightings, we believe, have given rise to the various faiths practi uh, practiced throughout Eorzea. As we, conf as we confirmed in Uldar, the Nalthal worshipped by people and the Nalthal we encountered here have more similarities than they do differences. In the course of exploring the Omvolus, two things caught my attention. The first is the gate which lies in the innermost area. If each of the other six gates lead to an it elementally aspected heaven, and we stand in the seventh heaven as Snogheim says, 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 what then lies beyond that last gate? The second is this monument. It harbors some manner of magic, unlike anything I've seen before. I will endeavor to decipher it, but it will take time. Divinities that have existed since time immemorial, who abide in domains resembling the heavens of legend. Why have they chosen to reveal themselves to mortals seeking battle? Unless they favor us with more of their secrets, it would seem this monument holds the key to solving the mystery. Indeed, much and more yet lies beyond our understanding, but we'll keep chasing the truth together. As I'm sure you'll agree though, this is tiring work, both mentally and physically. We need to pace ourselves. To which end, might I suggest we return to Reverend's Tull and have a rest before we embark on the next stage of our investigation. The Nezilo says, in the Vika page, Titan is said to have taught the kobolds how to mine and how to forge. This might be the link with Byregard, and that does make sense. There's also the consideration that it doesn't necessarily have to be the case that the kobolds guessed which element Byregard represents correctly. If he's just helping them with learning Earth-related stuff, it, it stands to reason that they would just be, you know... Assuming that he's an Earth Elemental, right? So rarely do I get to simply chat with colleagues. I had for fairly forgotten what it felt like. That's a lot of sugar cubes. Indeed, and it's quite fitting that we should be doing so here at the Seventh Heaven. Fitting? That's an understatement if, I have ever, if I've ever heard one. The sugar, sugar cube. The seventh heaven, the seventh and highest of the heavens, which rules over the remaining six, was right here in Madonna all this time. Relax, so no guy. Relax. This isn't fitting, my friends. It's destiny. Relax, no guy. You are obviously well versed in the myths surrounding the heavens and hells. If you don't mind, I should like to hear your thoughts on them. And then she explained. And later we returned to our heroes as she finished explaining. They replaced Kai's crystals with sugar cubes as a safety precaution. <laughs> Invested as they are in the, in the research, it doesn't take much to stoke their passions. My apologies if it makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> well, actually... 
Having always traveled alone, I'm admittedly not too familiar with such a lively atmosphere, but I do not mislike it. By the way, the two of you arrived at the Sunken Temple rather quickly. Did something happen? <laughs> eh. <laughs> well, as pleasant as this has been, it's past time we return to the Annex. The paperwork for this commission isn't going to complete itself, alas. <laughs> we te yeah, we teleported! <laughs> then I shall take myself to the Omphalos. There's so much there that I'd like to see. And I... I believe I will go for a walk nearby. It's getting a little warm in here. Alright, do take care now. Anyway, bye. Zillerman says, I returned from checking the, your vaults for data. I checked eight of your past streams and the, fa uh, and the fans in the layer always stops at four spins. Huh. That is an interesting revelation. That is helpful knowledge, because that means if they spin exactly four times, then their starting position is also their ending position, which makes that mechanic a lot easier to deal with. But also a little bit boring, doesn't it? Isn't it? Oh, Katsu, it's pleasant, isn't it? The smells and sounds of a tavern. It makes one feel... alive. And afterwards, stepping outside alone and breathing the cool air. I like that just as much. While we await developments, I shall remain here in Revenant's Toll. If there are any tidings, rest assured I will share them with you. Thank you for your help thus far. I doubt so much uh, I doubt so much could have been accomplished without you. By the way, there's new there's new tidings immediately. Oh greetings, Katsu. I didn't see you there. If you've come to ask about developments in our Phantom Realm investigation, your timing couldn't be better. A short while ago, I received word from Gratia. He and Kryal have com completed their preparations in Shalian and are ready, ready to resume fieldwork. Even as we speak, they make their way hither. Let's wait for them together, shall we? Oh, that is my most powerful ability to wait. Hey, Gleaming. Hope you're doing well. What if you wanted to go to heaven, but when you go got there, it turned out the kobolds were right and Titan uses landslide on you. <laughs> you finally get to heaven and he's just like, Surprise, number dweller! <laughs> ah, there they are. Um... Um, Grah? You... You good? Yeah. Huh. What in the heavens are you carrying? The heavens that we know actually exist. This, my friends, is the latest technological marvel to come out of Shalian. It's marvelously heavy. I give you the Aetheric Analyzer. Holding it thus, you take a measure of the ambient ether, whose waveform is then recorded by the Aetheric Transcriber at the back. Thus, this provides us with detailed data of the environment, which we can study at our leisure. As you know, the Phantom Realms are hidden by illusions in order to ascertain their nature. I said in order to ascertain their nature, I suggested Kryle that we record the data with proper equipment. Alas, said equipment is tremendously cumbersome. Ra has done well to bring it here in one piece, and as expensive as it doubtless is, I hope we can return it in the same condition. Return it? Yes, to the forum. In approving our investigation, they granted us use of the device in addition to their financial backing. Despite the students' greatly reduced scale, the forum has faith in our endeavors. Thus did the approval notice. De uh, thus did the approval notice declare. I am proud to say. 
We owe much of this goodwill to the Scions, yourself not least of all. That being said, we can't depend on the Forum indefinitely. No, we must stand on our own two feet again, and it begins with our efforts in this investigation. The Twelve are meant to be Eorzea's guardian deities, yet they seek battle with mankind. What could it possibly be that motivates them? Indeed. In trading with them earnestly, I am hopeful that we will find the answer. Well, we shouldn't keep Snowgaim waiting. Without further ado, let's join her in the Omphalos. The break your back machine. Girin says, on the one hand, I'd say they wanted to make it more consistent, but it's not like they didn't make other recall abilities have some randomness. I don't know. I feel like most of the mechanics they, like, reintroduced in that fight are somewhat uh, consistent. But it's hard to say because many of them were always consistent. So it's like, it, it, it didn't really add anything. Like, it's not like they made something that was already random, random. They might have just made them all consistent. And they, some of them were consistent already and some of them weren't. It, that could also be the case, look at the magic, that they, they made it that way so that the mechanic takes the same amount of time every time. But then again, they could have just had them spin like slightly faster if they needed to. But that is an interesting point, that when it spins an extra fifth time, it takes longer to resolve. Welcome back. That's true, the colored circles stay in uh, stay unpredictable. Well now, if if that isn't the etheric analyzer, you've done well to get it to get a hold of it. Indeed, we are duly grateful to the forum for the loan. It's no small thing to be lugging about, but I've always wanted to try it. If you're ready, Raha, you may proceed with measuring the ether of the Phantom Realm. Katsu, please, assi please assist him, will you? In the meantime, I have a mind to further examine the monument with Snowgaim. How does that sound? Like a plan. As a matter of fact, I've already done a little bit of work on that front. As you previously determined, the monument harbors some manner of magic, and this magic, I've since found, takes the form of an epigraph. By consulting experts in the field of archaeology, I was able to make a discovery. Oh yes, a most startling discovery. A startling one. That is, the epigraph is largely incomplete, so we can't read it. Bam, 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 bam. Hey Derek, do you have anything to comment on this? No? Are you sure? So you didn't make a discovery. Uh, but see, establishing what one doesn't know is also an important step in research. I mean, yes. For blessing, the language used doesn't appear to be completely unknown. If we can't but fill in the missing information, it should be possible to make sense of it. But where do we even begin looking for such information? Why, we ask the gods themselves, of course. It's big brain time. By giving them the battle they desire, we are doing them a favor, are we not? That being the case, I dare say they would graze us with their presence if caught it. That being the case, I dare say they would grace us with their presence if called. Please, come with me. 
How confident. Oh, the things I would ask them if, if they really did appear. Oh man, this omphalos is really big. It's really long for my small legs. Now, going by astrology, the heaven of Earth should be should be the next to open, and it just so happens I know the perfect incantation for this purpose. Do you now? Open Muntui. What? As a time-honored charm passed down in Gridania, whose patron is Nofika, one of the deities said to dwell in, the, dwell in the heaven of Earth. Come, everyone, say it with me. All right, everyone. Open Muntui, apparently. Maybe Open Monty. Open Muntui or something. You you thought this was Final Fantasy fourteen, but this is actually Dora the Explorer. Open Muntui. It actually worked. Did you all say it with me? You better have. Also, I will say, Silvermint, I had actually also not considered that it would take slightly longer. It's just that I've noticed that it isn't always 4 or always 5 in uh, Aglaia. Haha, <laughs> what delightful children you are. I too have decided to speak with you. Ooh, whoa. Look, it's Nofika! And her no <laughs> By the twelve, it, it's her. It's really her. She looks precisely as depicted in legend. Amazing. It is an honor to meet you, Nofika. If I may, what is it that you wish to speak about? You seek to decipher the monument, do you not? If you face more of us in battle, I myself included, we shall grant you the key to unlocking that mystery. Well... We would, of course, be much obliged for such a gift, but are you certain? The gods before were not exactly forthcoming with your secrets. Closely have we watched you from our respective sanctums, watched as you faced us and pursued the truth with pure hearts and minds. In light of what we have seen, we have concluded thus. Even should you uncover the monument's purpose, you would still be willing to lend us your aid. Help us to fulfill our heart's desire, and so too shall we grant you yours. I look forward to receiving you in my sanctum, my dear children. Orb. It's orbing time. Orb, 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 orb. The original plan was to rev revisit the heavens of lightning, lightning and fire. But I believe all would agree that we should prioritize, prioritize Nofika's invitation. Well, Snowgaim, your charm did the trick. The way, the way to another heaven lies open, and beyond it, the truth of the monument. I 
I can scarcely wait to pr to pour over the etheric data. Raha, Kaizu, I leave it in your capable hands. Oh boy. As for you, Derek, may we rely on your guidance once more? No, Lamal. Now that we know what, what awaits us, I do not feel my presence is necessary. On the contrary, I would only be a burden. As you wish, of course. We can still count on you to pray for our friends, though, I trust. I'm glad that I can join you this time, Katsu. Encumbered as I am with the Analyzer, I fear I won't be able to assist in battle, but I shall do my part and secure the data we need. Appropriate reaction to Nofikas, Nofikas. <laughs> I just wanted to add, in case any of you started playing Final Fantasy XIV after Euphrosine was added, when they put out, a, you know, the, the the sneak peek trailer for Euphrosine, they intentionally made sure that all footage that featured Nofika had her back turned towards the camera, so you couldn't actually see her Nofikas. And she appeared on multiple clips, as I recall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They would do that. <laughs> they know. They absolutely know. I didn't, uh, personally, Kirahin, I didn't notice initially. The thing that made me uh, made me notice it was that everyone else did. I was like, oh yeah. Let me just check in, see if everyone who's in the party actually wants to come along. I've arrived. We're just figuring out who who's coming and who isn't right now, it seems. All right, is this the group we're going with then? Erdel says, that's because Nofika's body was al was already revealed in an artwork about the Adders from Encyclopedia Eorzea, and people were wondering if they would match it in the actual game. That, that is an interesting, that is a funny way to word it. <laughs> they would match it. <laughs> mm, this looks fine.
Five, yeah, it, it might not even be five minute ga uh, five minutes, Gazel. It might be uh, more than that. I think it took ten minutes to get into Aglaya. I also just want to mention that I think it was... Wasn't it an hour ago that we finished Aglaya? So there's been like over an hour of story. <clears throat> Another thing I just also wanted to mention is that I think it's quite randomly interesting. The Skalic armor set in the Drowned City of Scala was I, I can't remember. I think it was I think it was the caster one, which was actually a set that was designed in a competition. And then the development team made, like, sets for the other roles that, like, matched the style. I think that was how it went. I don't remember if it was specifically the caster one, but one of them. Was, uh... One of them was, like, made and won in a contest. The thing that makes it interesting is that the researchers that we talk with in uh, in the pandemonium story and snowgrime are wearing at least the top of the ranged physical version of the set i know they're not wearing the pants because i happen to to know that the pants don't uh, the pants are shorts so and they're not wearing shorts so we know that much at the very least So they're just wearing the top of the set. Just, I just think it's fascinating. Oh, that was kind of fast. I think it's kind of fascinating because that means, in retrospect, that if that, if that set had not won that competition, then these characters would have worn different equipment as a result because they, that particular top was designed to match a, like an armor set that was made by... A per, like an artist, like that just participated in a contest. It could have been something else. And that was back in Stormblood. And I would guess, based on how like the patch cadences work, that the contest probably was held in Heaven's Ward. Because of how early Drowned City of Scala is in, uh, in Stormblood. Oh, we have once again a paladin who already has tank stance on. So no reason for me to Brutally fight them on it. Resolved. Oh, the Pansu Thief is uh, is ready for combat, as you can see. That's, uh, right. Like, was that the circle or the donut? That's the circle. The green one is the donut. Do you also have a fun fact, Vysels?
Oh, right. A forced marsh. And here comes the donut. Is it then a circle right after? That's mighty convenient for me. You have the Gossetsu armor and use the uh, of the and specifically use the gauntlets, but you have a samurai katana drop or made by the Tsukuyomi's loot. The sheath of that katana, colors its colors and mostly everything is designed to match Gossetsu's gauntlet. Hmm. That is quite interesting and weirdly specific. That was an awkward position to deal with. Oh, there's a circle here. We will she finish. See, she will. Bow down like the will of good children. Be strong for what awaits. By my authority, let the land be remade. Looks like I'm not doing enough damage to get aggro on anything. <laughs> well, I tried. Sometimes makes it a bit easier when the tanking burden is spread a little bit more. It is a very nice detail because of the relationship between... Uh, um. Uh, Yotsuya and Gosetsu, right? Oh, my game crashed. Awesome. Yeah, it happens. It's just annoying because it feels like it's happening quite regularly recently.
Well, it's it's still way easy as long as it's the game crashing and not OBS, for example, as I as I experienced recently. I will spin your face. Wah! Okay, that was a little weird. I came back into the games. The game didn't actually remember whether I had stacks or not. So it looked like I had zero stacks of uh, Shadowbringer. And then when I got the full stacks, I got both. Or did I just see it wrong? By the way, are they not supposed to be kept further apart than this? I guess it doesn't matter. I shall measure your work. Surrender. Did you get pushed off of me? Oh, he's already dead. Do you have any idea when Dawn Trail will be released? Well... The thing is, well, that is an inconvenient time for you to flip that, Namea. Uh, the thing is, we've been told to expect it in summer at some point. And that's ultimately the information we have. The only thing I can say beyond that is that the development team tries their very hardest to actually meet the deadline they give. So it means it'll be sometime summer. And I do believe Yoshi P said when they said summer that, yeah, that could mean the start of summer, but could, could also mean the end of summer. You just have to, like, the fact that they're saying summer and being so vague about it is specifically because they don't quite know for sure. Like, if they knew more precisely, they would have said so. So we don't really know. But the helpful thing is that if, if the development team ever gives an actual date, right? If they ever say this day it'll happen, then it is like it'll be a, it will not be normal or standard if it's suddenly delayed. Like Endwalker got delayed, but that was um, surprising.
Exactly, Kraken Mode had some special circumstances, but like there, there was a lot of things that suggested that they had, they were certain they could make it. Um, but then they couldn't. So the best I can give you, Vicels, is if Square Enix or like Yoshi P comes out and goes, it'll be this day, then it will absolutely be that day. But beyond that, we only know it'll be summer at some point. It is quite difficult with that particular mechanic because some people will say that because of their position it's clockwise so C takes the front and center one which is unusual. Other times the the expectation is well C takes the right one. Um, so that's why I just stayed put because I wasn't sure. And I didn't see eight people on the front and center one, which was also why I stayed put. Also, I, also, I was in melee range, so it was maximum uptime. At, 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 it was worth it for max uptime damage. Big value. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could actually skip Haloni's intermission? Wouldn't that be insane? Ah, I tried. It wasn't enough. Yeah, that that uh, that proximity AOE is extremely brutal. Oh, he says, couldn't we just all go to one of the spears? Yes and no, I think. Yes, because once you've killed the center spear, the, the like the other spears unlock, so you can just go to them. I'm guessing that uh, that there's a possibility that there might be a failsafe or something, so that you can't just do that. 
or maybe the failsafe itself is the simple fact that once you've killed the center spear, you can just go and help the other, so it's no big deal. But I think it does help and evens out the damage done, and so makes it a little faster if you spread out. Oh, nice boat. I, ho I hope you find it helpful if you do watch it. Oh, whoops. Order. Thank you, boats. I'm glad to hear that you that you that you that you want to get good. <laughs> oh, someone just went for it. It seems. That was me banning it or, or removing the message boat. That was me doing it. It's it's more so like I don't actually know what the point of that bot is to be completely honest. I'm not sure what the point is, but it's more like a principle thing is that it's a bot. And it's not a bot I invited. So I, like, I'm not sure what would be the right thing to do with it, but we've sort of just decided here that uh, it's a bot. And no one ever approached me and told me that, oh, that is actually a very, very special bot and don't do that. So that's just what we do. But yet, yeah, basically, just lists a bunch of content creator names that might be relevant for like, like might be mm, adjacently or directly related to Final Fantasy XIV streams. But yeah, it's always the same. Just lists a bunch of names. The weirdest part is that sometimes my name is in the list. 
So it's like, after I watched these six people, including you, I started watching you. It's just weird. Hot can't tell tall Kai from small Kai. The, the weirdest thing is based on the way that it describes it, it sounds like it has been like jumping streams today. Which means that for that logic to apply, it would have had to be watching this stream, leave, come back, and then go, well, I actually was watching this stream. But it's just weird. It's just weird. Dreams may yet become reality. Thank you. Just a moment. Surprisingly warm in here as so I just opened a window. You're both safe. Thank goodness. You have the data then? Wonderful, wonderful. I don't suppose I could do the honors and replace the transcriber cartridge? I've always wanted to take a closer look. Take care of removing it now. We don't want anything to happen to the data.
carefully does it. Come to me, O oh knowledge divine. Come to me. What is that? Someone said. Yeah. Oh. It, it's all right. The, the cartridge is safe. Let's finish the task before there are any more surprises. You have our gratitude for bringing us closer to achieving our dream. Oh, Althik, must you always be so formal? Although he has trouble expressing it, I assure you, my brother is absolutely giddy with joy. Why are you here, Nofika? Have you not sufficiently amused yourself with the mortals? Not nearly enough. I would talk to them some more. Nofika promised you the key to deciphering the monument, did she not? Yes, that's correct. Then you would do well to hold in your minds that which harbors information. Come now, brother. You need to speak plainer than that. To clarify, we shall create the objects you need, but your assistance is required to give them form. Worry not. Appearance has no effect on function. Just try and imagine that which, in your minds, is used to hold information. A book! A different book, a parchment, another book, and a phone! <laughs> there, these instruments shall be useful in your quest. Across Eorzea lie, lie eternal stones that hold the information required to complete the words of the monument. By holding an instrument out to a stone, it will take that information onto itself. We scattered these stones across the realm that mortals would not uncover our secrets. Of late, however, it would seem you have found alternate uses for them as objects of worship. Could they be the marks of the twelve? They are, aren't they? Oh, to think that they harbor information on the gods. Seems we have our next destinations. Aside from the three city-states, I believe the marks are located in Curthus and Mordona. I propose we split up. The Quakers have finished the task. I wish to come too! No, Minfina, it would not it would no, not do to burden these children so. After all this time, we finally had the chance to speak with mortals, to learn about them from up close, and we're not li and we're not to and we're not like to have another. I must say, I share Minfina's view. Even you, Haloni. I'd like to learn about you too, and I believe I speak for all of us. By all means, let us travel together. Music to my ears. We shall watch over you and see that you safely reach your destinations. Without further ado, then. Not so fast. It's the Critter Inquisition. 
Did you think you could go frolicking without us? The others have our domain well in hand, so we're coming too. Well now, far be it from us to stop you. Let us assume our disguises too, and then each choose a mortal to accompany. Please let it be something inconspicuous. <laughs> I believe my destination is Thanalan. Then it's Lanasea for Ah, the Twelve's Wood for Kryl. And last but not least, Mordona and Kurthus for Derek and Kaeth er Kaitsu. Will you be alright, Kryl? I shall be fine, you needn't worry. Graha being visible in the actual raids is why I have pet on my hotbar. Hmm. Now, if only I could reach his head, there might be a point to doing that, a small guy. We abided by the guard's selections, but why do you suppose the two of us were grouped together? Why, because you make the most intriguing pair! The guards felling hero and the well-faring explorer. I shall relish the chance to learn about both of you. Now then, the others have already set forth, so let us do the same. Aside from my own mark, I believe we'll find those of Thaliac and Haloni in Mordona and Kurthas. Also, monkey! Ork, ork! Oh my, what an adorable creature! Delighted to meet you, little one. It seems to want to join it seems to want to join us too. What an unusual company this has become. The gods truly know no inhibition. Forgive me, Kaizu, I couldn't have anticipated this turn of events. Just bite his ankles. Hi, Viek. Hope you're doing well. And Fina Bonnie. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? Let us seek out the marks at once. Yes, yes. No need to be so hasty. Shall we then, Katsu? The nearest mark is Thaliax, just outside in Modona. If memory serves, it overlooks a lake at a place called Wraithrost. Yeah, Coco, did you see it? The the god of love is a bunny when she when she's trying to be inconspicuous and hide. <clears throat> Isn't that something? Also, it just occurred to me that I paid to teleport out when I could have just left and just flown over that way, I think. Yeah, Menfina turns into a, into a bunny. Also, hey, Silver Plush Fluff. Hope you're doing well. See? Look, it's Menfina. <laughs> I 
Now then, we had to hold out an instrument to the stone. Would you care to do the honors here, Katsu? I don't even hold out the phone! The instrument vibrates rapidly in your pocket, apparently. I guess. You have 15 new messages. Tis done. The information held in the stone has been etched. As Altic said, these stones are eternal. No matter their shape or location, their nature is unchanging. Together with the monument and the Omphalos, they have remained the same since time immemorial. Twas the, twas the love that meant bear for us, and we for the star, that compelled us to create the monument and the stones. And though men do not know the truth of the stones, they offer them prayer. This act is a manifestation of your bond with us, while the stones are a manifestation of our bond with the star. And so, by praying to the stones, you effectively cultivate a bond between yourselves and us and the star. Delightful, is it not? <clears throat> Though we appreciate your eagerness to talk, perhaps we should save some conversation for the destination to come. If we linger too long in any one place, we are liable to be late to reconvene with the, with the, with the others. Then let us make for the central highlands of Curthus, within the Fury's gaze my own mark awaits. Kogo, did you miss the part where they where they were like envision an object that holds information for you, and then the player character, like everyone else, makes like either a book or like a parchment of of some sort. Hmm, I think it's fast to teleport first, but then the player character makes a phone basically, and then they they summon a tome like a poetic tome stone, but it's basically a phone, right? Like it's if it's phone shaped and it holds information. Exactly. Envision something that holds information. All the other people, old schoolers, grab a book or a parchment. Meanwhile, the player character is like, idiots. Just choose a phone, then you can search in it. The best part is that your character, when you do it, look... A combination of concerned, happy, and surprised that it worked. The elegance are older than us. That's true. I guess the reason why we summon one is just because we're like, that's way more convenient. Let's not forget that the primary reason why we have to do anything for the Endwalker Relic Quest line is because Mandeville cannot acquire Causality Tombstones. We have so many of them. Does so it make sense? We're well acquainted with them. There it is. The Mark of the Fury. It wouldn't do to burden you constantly. It wouldn't do to burden you constantly. I shall extract the information this time. Then we just give her that particular tombstone. Looking back, Kaloni, you've grown noticeably more imposing this past millennium. There are also more statues in the Heaven of Ice. Odd, but an idea, idea occurs to me. Katsu, this time I want you to share what you know about the worship of Haloni. I dare say it will be interesting to hear what mankind thinks of her from your perspective. The Ishgardian Orto uh, Orthodox Church is the heart of faith in the Fury. 
Ah, yes. The prayers of the people are fervent indeed, and through the church they evolved. A change I felt with my very being. Well, how very fascinating. It's a fine thing indeed to hear directly from mortals. Still, as much as Heloni loves her children, it troubled her to see them at war with the dragons, to see those who share this star spill each other's blood. As you should well know, Menfina, it isn't our place to judge the faith of mortals. Even when we lend them our, ha our aid, we must refrain from intervening in their affairs. Thank you, Kitsuneko. Lest there be any doubt, mankind's faith in us is mankind's alone. By your prayers, our forms are, be are become that which they need to be. Apologies for the wait. Acquired the information, have you? Excellent. Let us proceed to the next mark. Mine! As I recall, it lies near the steel vigil, by the cliff west of the entrance. Follow me. <laughs> it is quite funny how they've decided to structure the alliance rates like this. I did mention it earlier, but that um, they've structured this alliance rate series such that there's a relatively short story bit, and then there's the, the alliance rate, like, immediately. And then they put, like, a huge story bit afterwards... Like, I mean, obviously, they put it where it makes sense. But it feels like when they've done it multiple times in a row, it feels like it's a deliberate, like, maybe this is a good way to do it. Well, now, aren't we quick? My mark lies just ahead. Let, let's wait for the others and then continue together. Like, I don't know if there's a particular benefit to doing it like that. But, um, yeah. Oh, look, someone's praying. <laughs> How delightful to see one of my faithful children. Uh-oh. Oh, benevolent goddess, grant me deliverance, I beseech you. Save my soul. Huh? You, you're the one who was hunting down the lambs of Dalamode. Me? I knew it. Knew you wouldn't stop till you've dealt with every last one of us. Now you've come for me. I'll just think that this is her will. The lambs of Dalamode. They're the cult that appeared prior to the seventh umbral calamity, are they not? In the name of their faith, they abducted and sacrificed innocent souls and did not fear death. I've committed no crimes, I swear it, and Fina is my witness. Have you though? Is that true though? In the beginning, we simply prayed to the twin twin moons for Dalamud to one day shepherd our souls to the bosom of his mistress. But it all changed when Dalamud began turning red. More and more of us began believing that he was our savior, that we must prove our loyalty with our lives, else we would suffer eternal damnation. So that, so that's how your group took on its fanatical ways, and came to be branded a dangerous cult. And at some point I assume you were tasked with hunting them down. I used to be a merchant in Uldar, but timid as I am, I struggled to survive in that cutthroat world. 
That's why I turned to Manfina. I wanted to bask in her gentle acceptance and gain courage from her strong and faithful hound. They were my solace. The only way I could be it could be at peace with myself. But they took it from me. The fellows who committed those horrible deeds, and those who reviled me as one of them, they took it away. You're strong, aren't you? Grant me deliverance. I beg you. Judge me and show me the way. Tiny little old me! <laughs> Just can't bear it anymore. What good is a god I can't see? It won't grant me a thimble of sucker no matter how much I pray. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. What, what do you think, Manfina? Are you feeling on this one? Yeah? You mustn't seek in men what you seek in gods. Strong as she is, she is but a mortal. Like you, she is made of flesh and blood and possessed of her own will. Nothing more, nothing less. It avails you not to raise others while, while belittling yourself. You are your own person, with a path of your own to walk. Even should you be taken by despair, that you are here now makes you no different from this woman. So believe me, believe me when I say, all will be well. Keep your faith in Menfina, believe in her love and grace, and you will surely learn to love others as well as yourself. Please forgive me for my unseemly outburst. I had been feeling lost, and all my anguish came spilling out. It was Menfina herself who brought you here, I'm certain of it. To encourage and guide me. Taking your words to heart, I'll try searching for a new path. Should you feel lost again, take to the road. See what is out there. Learn how others live and think. And you're bound to find your way. Blessings be upon you on the road ahead, dear child. Who said that? Did, did, did you say something? No, no, no. I think the bunny has something to say, though. Did Minfina just kill that man? No, no, no. She just, uh... She's just hanging out, apparently. <sighs> Unsolicited though it was, I don't regret saying those words to him. He needed to hear them. But come, Katsu. This time it's your turn to extract the information. Isn't it convenient? Then we have three extractions, and I made you start. So it's your turn twice. Your blessings on the road ahead. Pit and pulls you. <laughs> and also welcome back, Emir. The instrument vibrates rapidly. Forget me, Katsu. I fear I've caused you trouble. I'm relieved to know that you truly are strong, in both in body and spirit both. Far be it from me to ask this of you, but please do not hold it against that child. We do not wish for our existence to bring grief to our children. Yet, no matter which faith, we are who we are, who we are because of those who believe in us. My hound is no exception. He was born when men came to worship the object their ancestors cast, upon, cast onto the heavens. We are not all powerful. We can't grant all of mankind's wishes. Nonetheless, we always, always hear you. No hope is too small, no prayer too faint. 
I just wanted to make that clear, lest you forget, we love mankind dearly. Divine non-intervention. With this, we've completed our task and may return to the Omphalos. Yet I can't help but think about Kryl. Gratia seemed to be worried about her, did he not? It was as if something weighed on her mind. Though she is in company of deities, I find myself worrying too. Whatever it is, there's only one way to find out. Yes, I suppose so. If there, if there are no objections, let us seek out Kryl. She has headed to the Twelvewood with Nofika and Byregard, yes? They are presently too far away for us to sense, but we should be able to locate them once in the forest. I see. In that case, let us make for Gridania. Speaking, Bonyu. So here we are in Gridania, and you sense no fear can buy regard. I do, but something is strange. Indeed, they appear to be in different places. Ufika is the nearest of the two and is quite close by. I shall go and find her. Wait, you mustn't go off on your own. Ugh, confound it all. After her, Kaiso. Waff, waff, bark, bark. There she is. Well now, I wasn't expecting to see you all here. Is all the matter? You're supposed to be with Krylon and Byregard. Where are they? Oh, we became separated while I was distracted, listening to the elementals. The beings are the voice of those who call the wood home. As I am the patron of this land, they could not help but report to me. You gods can sense, sense each other. Even should you become separated, shouldn't it be a simple matter to find them again? Indeed, it would seem you're keeping something from us, Novika. The Drama Twelve! Hmm... You, you see, the problem is my hands are so tiny. Oh, Heloni, there's simply no fooling you. Very well, I shall confess all. The child Kryl wanted to visit our stones alone, you see, to complete a task without us watching over her. We merely respected that wish. The abilities, I do not believe she's in any danger, but the warrior that, her, that, the warrior that he is, by regard, decided to follow after her discreetly. If this is her wish, then indeed we must abide by it. As for Byregard, uh, yes, I sense him in the place men call the South Shroud. One of the stones is situated there, I believe near Camp Tranquil. Let us search that area for Byregard. If we find him, we should find Kryl as well. I suppose that works as well.
It's the sus spriggan. What brings you all here? We understand you've been following Kryle. Where is she? Having acquired information from my stone, she now makes for all six. I keep my distance to avoid being seen and was about to continue on when you appeared. Aldix Stone is her last destination, is it not? Let us all go and meet her there. If everyone so wishes, then very well. So he is now passage. I shall call upon Master Valga's servants to bear the mortals. And here they are. It seems we have to we have the use of these hawks. Let's see if we can spot Kryle from above. I will bring our companions, so you needn't worry about them. Are you ready, Katsu? Sure. Are there innocent spriggans? Well Go, my feathered friend. Fly like the wind. I can't bring you. I must thank you, Katsu. Talking to you helped me to find the resolve to seek out Kryle. No signs of her here. Let's continue on to Aldix Stone. These birds are not fast. Did you just see? They're slower than a person flying by the use of an umbrella and nothing more. Ralga just coming in like, Yes, I'm the destroyer, not the speedy boy or something. Those birds are meant for destroying. Well now, well now, did you come all this way just to check on me? I've been on edge. I've been on edge, worrying that I might stumble into Odin, so you gave me a bit of a fright. No figure tells us that you wish to tra you wish to travel alone. What prompted you to send the gods away? Hmm, it's difficult to explain. I suppose I suppose I wanted to seek the answers in my own way. As the as the gods told us, if we wish to know the truth, we must discover it for ourselves. In spite of this, they've seen fit to not only set us upon the right path, but accompany us besides. This bespeaks the faith that they have in man's spirit of inquiry, and it gives me heart. After all, it is the self-same spirit that defines the students of Baldessian. Like everyone, I want to uncover the truth of the Twelve, to know their aspirations and understand them. And having seen a dear friend embark on countless adventures, I've developed the desire to see and experience the world for myself. There are dangers out there, of course, but I want to prove that I could handle them and perform my task. I see. Indeed, as much as we can learn from others, there's no substitute for seeing with one's own eyes. And in yours, I see the gleam of yearning for exploration and discovery. It reveals to me the love you bear for our star, and it makes me glad. What's all this up? What's this all of a sudden? It's embarrassing when you say such things with a straight face. Right, then. I've yet to acquire the information here, so I'll tend to it at once. Perhaps you'd like to wait for me at Quarry Mill? Pfft. 
probably executed destruction takes time, you know. <laughs> you can't just rush those things. Oh, and here we are, apparently. Let's wait for Krile here. If he can buy Regatta with her, so she will be fine. Ah, first a man at Manfina's mark, and now Krile. In the course of traveling with you and yours, it seems I inevitably end up encroaching upon others' lives. Ock, ock, ock! Aye, yours as well. Though nothing binds you to me. You've followed me ever since I tended your wounds. You're free to go anywhere, you know. A person's life belongs to that person alone. Others can't be expected to assume responsibility for it, and thus is it wrong to interfere. Alas, once I've glimpsed someone's heart, I can't find I find I can't avert my gaze. It truly is difficult to be amidst people. It doesn't take too long to it doesn't take too long to extract the information. Krile should be here any moment now. Apologies for the wait. With that, I've I've obtained information from from all of my stones. You've taken care of yours already, yes? Thank you for worrying about me. While it's good to know that I can handle myself, I'm heartened to be doing this with you all. I owe you thanks as well, by regard and Nofika, for accepting my request with good grace. Think not of it. You did well to see uh, to see your tasks through, little one. And I totally didn't stalk you. Indeed. Come, come, let us all return to the Omphalos. Onward to the Omphalos. Are we? I feel like we're reaching the end of this part. Derek just said that because he saw her arriving in the distance. She should be here soon as, she lo as he looks straight in her face. Mm, I think she's right around the corner. It's just like an intuition that I have. You took your time, Katsu. Did something happen? Ah, so you rendezvoused with Kryl. How was your experience with the guards, if I may ask? Ugh, dreadfully boring. Not only did you help a disillusioned man find his way, you looked in on Kryl besides. Thank you, Katsu. And you as well, Derek. Right, Derek? I fear I overstepped my bounds, but what's done is done. We shall return to our sanctums. We have our gratitude for the delightful time. By holding your instruments out to the monument, you will be able to augment the missing information. Be well, dear children. Disperse! Shall we, then? Time for the power of phone and book and book and a parchment and a book. With their powers combined, they are Captain Planet? Amazing! What was impossible to decipher now is crystal clear. It's now crystal clear. Without further ado, I shall read out the epigraph. 
As beings who endure by the will of the star, we are susceptible to the influence of hopes and prayers. Thus do we commit our yokes herein, lest we stay astray from our purpose. He who is named by regard shall preside over construction. His duty to fortify the works of men and encourage them to build. He who is named Ralgar shall preside over destruction. His duty to galvanize the star's beating heart and facilitate mankind's regeneration. She who is named Azima shall preside over the sun. Her duty to nurture its life-giving light and illuminate the truth for all to see. He who is named Nalthal shall preside over the subterrane, his duty to make gleam the riches hidden in the darkest depths and in men themselves. She who is named Nofika shall preside over fertility, her duty to fill the land with life and prepare a path of peace and plenty. He who is named Althik shall preside over space and time, his duty to endow the star with material vigor that mankind's march may never cease. She who is named Alhaloni shall preside over the glaciers, her duty to hold the melting ice at bay and imbue men with constancy and tranquility. She who is named Menfina shall preside over the moon, her duty to perpetuate the turning of, of night and day and foster love in the hearts of all. He who is named Thaliac shall preside over the rivers, his duty to quench the thirst of men and water their minds with wisdom. She who is named Nemea shall preside over the stars, a duty to preserve the celestial fabric over the seasons and weave the threads of men's lives. She who is named Limlane shall preside over the seas, her duty to, seek, to, to administer the tides and inspire men to come together as one and seek new horizons. He who is named Oshan shall preside over the mountains, his duty to sustain the breath of the firmament and in wandering, sh in wandering share in men's solitude. He who is unnamed shall watch unflinching, his duty to stand guard over his charge always and unto the end. Hmm. There the epigraph concludes, we've been given quite a lot to ponder. The epic graph. Look at this epic graph. I know it's an epigraph, but it's funny if it's an epic graph. Hopes and prayers influencing their nature. Have you any thoughts on the contents of the epigraph, Katsu? Every time I do it, it makes me laugh. The worship of Dalamud brought forth when Venus Hound. You mean to say that prayers have changed the twelve into their present forms? That is rather hard to believe. Given what we know, uh, given what we now know of Dynamis, I believe it is entirely possible. In the presence of that energy, hopes and prayers have more tangible results than one might expect. Its power may be curbed upon our star, but over thousands of years of worship, it could have influenced the gods in various ways. Ways such as that which Kaiser just described, for one. Others that come to mind are Helone's shield and spear, which reflect her status as a goddess of war, and Nemea's spinning wheel, which is an apt apparatus for a goddess of fate. Thus did they create this monument, this yoke, that they might never lose sight of their duty, no matter how much they may, how much they may change. I'm inclined to agree with Raha. Inclined. 
A god wrote that they endure by the will of the star. Who that refers to, we all know too well. Heidelin. By sundering reality, she must have known that she would shake the very foundation of existence. Anticipating the potential chaos, I suspect she charged her collaborators with maintaining stability. If this is true, then might not the 13th unnamed being be the Watcher on the Moon? What do you think? Pieces certainly fall into place. I wonder if he would be willing to share what he knows. As it stands, we've yet to encounter three gods. As there's no telling what may happen once we've fought them all, I believe we should try to uncover as much of the truth as we can, the better to know how to proceed. Manatee restored! It's the Watcher! To that end, ere we seek out the Watcher, Raha and I shall return to Charlien to compile our findings, the data from the Analyzer not least of all. To think that the investigation might lead us to the moon. I eagerly look forward to the next stage of our fieldwork. Katsu, like as not, yet more grueling encounters with the gods await. You should rest up and gather your strengths. Only me. Not long now ere we arrive at the truce. So hey Ryan, hope you're doing well. For the longest time I've journeyed alone, not involving myself in the affairs of others. But I've enjoyed our time together. You've undertaken the investigation with all earnestness, and it has been a pleasure to be a part of to be part of it. When I imagine the moment we must part ways, I can't help but be saddened, and it surprises me that I feel that way. Forgive me, I didn't mean to wax sentimental. If you'll excuse me, I shall head outside for some fresh air. Fresh air. Exactly, Amya. Yeah. He's indeed wearing the, the Cape of Happiness, I believe. It's actually not a Samurai or Monk chest piece. It's a universal one. I just decided to use it for that. There he goes again. Katsu, do you suppose you could follow after him? I can't, I can't quite say why, but I feel as though he'll suddenly vanish one day, never to return. Indeed, Orion. We could all use a cloak of happiness a little bit. Sometimes. I use it. I never actually planned to have one. But uh, the, my friend Mars made it for me. I was like, well, I'll try and make an outfit work with it. You may have noticed that sometimes it clips through my character's hair. But I use it anyway. Normally, I don't do that. Like, if, if an outfit I made clips, then I'll try to do something else. But it works most of the time. Oh, tis you, Katsu. What is it? No, 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 Coco. Maus. M-A-U-S. Made it. <laughs> no, no, he's not. 
The snow guy is worried that I'll suddenly vanish, you say? Well, as the saying goes, all things must come to an end, whether we will it or no. When our work is finished, we must go our separate ways. Doing so will sadden me, as you know. Yet, that sadness is part of the joy I have derived from our companionship. So, I will accept it when the time comes, and strive with you to the last. Ork? You could use a few more... A little more pixels, don't you think? Baby Obobo. As you know, my friend, I would rather you live your own life, but having helped you, I won't send you away against your will. Now, you, on the other hand... Well, you are a busy woman, so I won't keep you. As before, rest assured, I will share with you any tidings I receive from, receive from Kryle. Take care, my friend, and see you again in due course. Yeah, the, it's the unfortunate reality me of having a uh, long hair on your character. Right, I'll be right back, and then we start the final part. But in the meantime, vanity restored. All right, I'm back, and yes, Orion, doing Thalia. Small guy, the busy woman. Small, yeah. She has a lot of crystals to eat. She has to stay in shape, you know. 
You don't you don't get this kind of figure not doing anything. Oh, Kaizu, it is good of you to come, but I'm afraid there's still no word from Kryl and Grahatia. They're working as fast as they can to compile the findings of our investigation, I shouldn't doubt. But between the Phantom Realm's Aetheric data and the monuments, and the monuments epigraph, they have much and more to review. Now, while awaiting developments, I had a mind to pay Snogheim a visit in the Omphalus. If you aren't otherwise occupied, you should come too. Yeah, you have to sleep for six days and, you know, then kill a few gods on day seven. On the one hand, it's a bit of a shame that uh, the... Uh, oh, I could, uh, I could do this. So that you can hang out with the squad. It's a shame. It's a little bit of a shame that it's uh, instanced, so you can't see other players. On the other hand, wouldn't it be weird to find this secret place and it's just swarming with people? It looks like a tourist attraction. Wouldn't that be a little weird? Oh, if it isn't Kaizu and Derek. But no Krylo Raha, I see. Unfortunately, spe unfortunately, speaking of whom, would you not prefer to be with them in Shalin? You're a researcher too, after all. I find myself much more effective in the field. Being here gives me inspiration, you see. And of late, I've been mulling over the opening words of the epigraph. As beings who endure by the will of the star, we are susceptible to the influence of hopes and prayers. Thus do we commit our yokes herein, lest we stray from our purpose. The suggestion that faith has shaped the nature of the twelve paints a truly intriguing picture. If truth be told, I was if truth be told, I was also hoping that I might speak with the gods again. But they haven't graced us since the, since the time we solved the mystery of the monument. They only do so on exceptional occasion, it seems. <coughs> Be that as it may, I believe there might be another way to see them. When we journeyed with the gods, Azimba told me that each of them wished to speak with you in private. You, Kaizu. If you were to call them before their heavens, I have a feeling they will answer. So, won't you give it a try, and afterwards let us know what they said? I for one see no harm in it. But if, you are dis but if you are disinclined, then do not feel pressured. It is entirely your decision. Anyway, we expect you to do exactly this. I mean, it says she has a crush on Ofika, right? Oh, yeah, I'd say so. Snogheim basically did the slash wow emote at her before we had access to it. You now have the opportunity to speak with those of the twelve whom you have encountered thus far. To do so, call to them before the entrances to their respective heavens. You may advance the quest at any time by speaking with Derek and the Omphalos. That is also true. We technically bring 23 other people. So, like, it's not a secret, but it's still weird when you enter initially if there's just, like, a swarm of, like, 50 people. Which would have happened day one. Let's start with Byregard. The pink orb. He's just like me for real for real. I'm also a builder of some sort, aren't I? Ah, Katsu. Pleased am I that you should seek me out. I'd wish to speak with you. Have you ever been dedicating yourself have you have you been dedicating yourself to crafting, I wonder? In my capacity as the builder, I watch your progress upon this path with keenest interest. 
The act of crafting embodies the spirit of improvement and, va and advancement. It is my hope that you will strive ever forward and seize that which you most desire with your own hands. Traverse says, I've heard you get bonus dialogue with your character's chosen deity. That true? I believe so. You'll probably see when we get to all thick. Kai is also a hammer-wielding buff man, IRL. This is just a VTuber model. Why did you choose the weird, like, blonde, reddish haired Danish guy VTuber model? You could have chosen anything, and you decided to settle on this? Really? Well, well, if it isn't the dauntless Katsu, full glad am I that you would thus call to me. When you and yours investigated the origins of the Fist of Rauka, you posited some interesting theories. The connection between myself and the Sylph's divinity, in particular. You did well to draw that conclusion. You inquiring minds have taken you far, child of man, and they will take you further still. Ah, Katsu, at last you've come. <laughs> I was right to entrust your zealous scholar companion with a message. Ever since our first meeting, I knew that I simply must see you again. There's something familiar about you. You awaken forgotten feelings in me. Feelings that once smothered like embers amidst their ashes. Perhaps you resemble someone I knew long ago. Yet, whatever the reason, your presence gives me comfort at war and warmth. May your light ever burn bright. The same looks just like Guy IRL. <laughs> we basically have the same hair color. Kaitsu, we bid you welcome. Know that though though we appear to be two beings, a dual aspect of divinity, it was not always so. Man's hopes harbor, harbor power, it was his faith offered over millennia that shaped us into our present form. That must have been weird. In answer to your faith, we, the traitors, shall watch over mankind as he strives for that which he desires. That mood has been really weird. Just one day waking up like that. Also, oh, good night, Coco. Sorry, well, it must have been weird to just wake up one day and be like, apparently I'm two people now. That's actually true, Silverman. That would be even weirder because it's just one day. It's just like, what? Huh? How bold you are to summon me, Katsu. There's no less than I expect from you. In recognition of your valor and deeds, I offer a word of counsel. Thanks. Well, do I know the power of men's hopes, of mortal faith, and there's no faith that I reject. Yet in every age, there are those who invoke the name of the divine for their own ends. Be not misled by them. Anyway, that was all. That's all I had to say. <coughs> Talk with someone else.
Oh, Katsu, what a delightful surprise. You wished to see me, did you? She is very cute. I'm truly grateful that we can talk like this. As you know, I'm the goddess of love. Yet, that obviously doesn't mean I have a monopoly on love. For instance, my brethren love mankind with all their hearts, just like me. And whether or not Oshan is my beloved as mortals believe, I have more than enough room in my heart for everyone, be it men or gods, I love you all alike. And needless to say, I love my adorable Dalamut too, whom you and yours gifted to me. It's the big tail. Oh yeah, it's it's Hatsune Minfinaku. Minfinaku. Hmm. Hmm. And he has three. Why, if it isn't Katsu, you wish to speak, do you? Well, I'm going to be the one speaking, as you know. Tell me, have you ever met an elemental? Many hold that they were born of me, and as I mentioned, they are the voice of those who abide in the Twelfth Wood. At times they may seem excessive in their actions, but it is out of an abundance of love, so pray be good to them and heed their warnings. And then Ulfik, which is Smolkai's deity. Let's see if he says some more. By the way, the deity of time and space is Small Kai's deity. Hmm. I find it incredibly funny that he has those thingies to hold his cape. <clears throat> Katsu, is it? I must say, there's something to be said for being summoned by a mortal, and one of your own besides. The life of man is but a drop in the great river of time. Thus, I, you and yours want to rush ahead, not wasting a single moment. Be that as it may, certain sights will only come into view if one stops to look, so be not afraid to pass the time in ways which, at first, may not seem fruitful. Should you dare to do so, you may well be visited by an eye-opening experience. Such is the richness of time. And you did. You may notice he did say one of his or one of your own. Besides, like he actually did acknowledge that it's he's my deity. But it didn't seem like he had much to add. Small guy, the singularity. <laughs> Well, now, if it isn't my dear Katsu, how good of you to call to me. I'm sorry if I gave you a shock by joining my brother in battle, but I couldn't help myself. We've always done everything together, he and I. Ah, such a joy it was to face you and yours. You displayed the self-same determination that allowed you to defy fate, and it was one surprise after another. Yet it is small, but it is still appreciated, I feel like. It's it's a thing you dis that some people decided actually over a decade ago. And then it turns out to have some sort of story significance. In fact, it's almost it's almost a shame. I think they also acknowledge it when we meet the last three. But it's not I feel like I've heard it's even less with them. So it almost is a shame if you chose like Thaliac, for example. Spoken to your satisfaction, have you? Then let us await Krylon Grads here together. Wait with Derek. Hmm. Still no sign of them. Uh, 
Ah, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. As an adventurer, you're a better traveler than most. Of the places you have seen, what kind do you like best? Bustling halves, brimming with activity, because that's basically where Small Kai is, isn't it? Makes most sense. Ah, yes, I can see the appeal in that. Though I, tra though I travel alone, I quite enjoy listening to the sounds of life in the, in the cities and towns I visit. She likes the ones that give her crystals, indeed. And Chelsea, I th and maybe you missed it before, but like, uh, Minfina looks similar to Hatsune Miku with the pigtails and everything. That's that's the joke. And Imiya's uh, deity is Minfina, and Minfina calls her believers, her children. I myself am, am partial to wandering. Eorzea, so rich in ether, this land, and possessed of so many aspects. It was when I was traveling through the Twelveswood that I encountered this this fellow. I knew not how he came to be injured and alone, but I couldn't turn a blind eye. He has long since recovered, and I probably should have returned him to his forest. But when I see him here, undaunted in the presence of gods, I can't help but feel it was fate that delivered him to me. Still, the day will come when we must go our separate ways. They're finally here, everyone! Wolf's Den Pierre Music! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. How fared your work? It took longer than we anticipated, but we managed to compile our findings, and then del uh, deliberated the course of action. Indeed, here on, we would do well to, th treat with ca uh, to th tread with caution. The waveforms we recorded with the Aetheric Analyze revealed an unsettling occurrence. In the course of fighting us, the gods expended a tremendous amount of their ether, so much so as to dilute their very essence. As you worry, you've, you've done no wrong, Katsu. The gods themselves wish to fight, after all. That being said, we should avoid engaging in, engaging in further battle until we learn more about their true objective. To that end, we will seek out the 13th unnamed being, whose duty is to watch unflinching. If Ra is correct, and we have no reason to believe otherwise, said being is the watcher on the moon and the moon. The watcher on the Kai. You'll be pleased to know I've already acquired permission to use the Tower of Babel from the Ilzabad contingent, who we'll oversee the structure with Galian people's leave. We we're really going then? To the moon? Huzzah! Huzzah! Heh, <laughs> I wonder what the Watcher's like. If there are no other matters, then let us set forth at once. The Watcher's clearly in Denmark. <laughs> if you still wish to speak with the gods, best to seek them out now. They may not be here, not be there later. It's quite interesting that they're like, oh, talk with Derek when you're ready to proceed. You can talk with the gods now, though. And then after the cutscene, it's the game is still like, well, you could still talk, like an additional talk if you, you know, if you want one. Greetings, Heidelin's champion. You're ever welcome here, as are your companions. It 
It is a pleasure to meet you, Watcher. We come hoping that you would answer some questions for us. Questions about Hydaelyn. We've deciphered the monument at the heart of the Phantom Realm. In addition to the names and duties of the Twelve, it speaks of one who is unnamed, who shall watch unflinching. Are we correct in assuming that that individual is you? The Twelve have existed for eras. If you know aught about them, will you not share your knowledge with us? They have a desire which they claim can only be fulfilled through battle with mankind. We wish to understand what that is. Please, said Derek, the totally normal man. Well, since this very normal man is asking, some man has managed to come this far. <coughs> very well, you've earned the right to know. Remember, however, that I am but a creation. Though I, am be no, though I have been imbued with some memories of the past, they are far from complete. Hmm. First of all, I am indeed the unnamed being the monument describes. An entity created by Heidelin to serve a purpose, alongside the Twelve. <gasps> Together, they were charged with preserving equilibrium on a sundered and unstable star. Like myself, they were given shape from people who once existed. And like myself, they believed that the world should be entrusted to the new life that had emerged. While I do not possess detailed memories of that, of that time, Venar selected those she deemed best suited to their respective duties. That would explain why the Twelve appear to have personalities like mortals. The men and women they once were influenced their personalities, yes, but so too did the faith of mortals. Knowingly or no, when men pray, they, were, they will the object of their worship to assume a form that can better grant them their heart's desire. In this manner have the Twelve been shaped over eons into images that fit men's ideals. So you were right, Raha. Hopes and prayers have the power to influence the gods. Yet even as, as they thus changed, at Venar's behest, they would have refrained from intervening in mortal affairs. As a result, there will have been times when they acted in ways that are contrary to expectations. But now that Hydaelyn is no more and the final day is averted, the Twelve have arrived at a decision regarding their fate, all their own. It is not for me to reveal the truth of their desire. I can, however, guarantee that it will not visit harm upon mankind. Nay, far from it. Well, I, for one, never felt that the gods meant ill us ill. To have your guarantee as well, we couldn't possibly doubt them anymore. It is most, reassur most assuring to confirm the connection between you and the Twelve. On this, we may proceed in our quest with easier hearts. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. We shall return to the Omphalos and continue engaging with your brethren. That is well. As I watch on, I shall pray that the tale comes to a happy conclusion for gods and men alike. It's ooking time! An inconsequential request from an inconsequential man, yeah indeed. He's just some guy, after all. It's been a while. <coughs> May your journey be fulfilling. It's been a while, but as I recall, people were already, like, suspecting that Derek was one of the gods. And, like, very reliably, a lot of people were. Even uh, in, like, 
by the time the second raid had come out. Like, there were some people that were already suspecting it after the first. But by the second, it was a lot of people who was like... I, th I think he's not just a guy. Hardly given that uh, weird thing about um, the snow guy being like, I think he might disappear. He says, I have expected it to be the monkey. When I did it on, when I did the last raid on stream on my main, I did actually say, was it the monkey all along? Just to be funny. But I was also hoping, because it would have been so, so funny, if it was. Something's amiss. The gods' avatars are nowhere to be seen. That's because our preparations are complete. <clears throat> Derek the normal man and his godly monkey. Yeah, exactly. It would have explained also how Derek could have been traveling with that monkey for who knows how long. And it's still a baby monkey. Like, how is it still a baby? <clears throat> I agree with that too, Gleaming. It kind of matches, right? <clears throat> ah, I've waited so bloody long for this moment. Limlane, are such uncouth words the first you would speak unto our guests? Oh, leave off, Thaliac. You can't tell me you're not as excited as I am. I would be the first to admit, it my, admit my joy, but on such a momentous occasion, I would act with due propriety. Well met, children of man. It is our understanding that you have spoken with a watch and ascertained our true nature. Indeed, we were created by Heidelin to tend the star. Having built the Omphalos at its heart, and our sanctums throughout Etherich Eorzea, we labored to preserve the balance of reality. All of this we've learned, but there's still one thing we do not understand. Our analysis of the Phantom Realm revealed that you and yours dilute your very, very selves by fighting us. Would this not impede your ability to carry out your duties? Hmm. We appreciate your concern, but you needn't worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the baby Obobo was Oshan all along? I knew it! You were him all along! I knew it, Derek, right from the moment I saw you. There was something sus about you. That could also be Girahin, where it's just the, the the baby monkey and Derek. Likewise, I knew that you harbored suspicion as my as to my true identity. While my brethren used various creatures as their avatars, I chose the form of a man. The better to share in your solitude. And it fell to me. The Wanderer, to beckon onto the Umphalus, they who could grant our wish. It's interesting how he has like a horn, like a bit like the Summoner outfits.
Uh, uh, what? How could you hide such a thing from us? Had you known my true identity and our purpose, we feared that you would refuse to fight us. But our fears were unfounded. You have heeded our request and, despite the hardships, endeavored to grant it. Hey Drew, hope you're doing well. Forgive me, Katza, but I must leave the little fellow in your care. In the innermost part of our realm, we shall reveal the truth in its entirety. I await your coming with bated breath. What do you mean, Girahin? What he demonstrated there was that anyone could walk on the water. The player character walks on the water right after him. This is our grandest moment, mortal. Gird your loins and have at us. I shall receive you with my all. Be as a raging torrent, child of man. Da -da 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 -da. F F for poor Ook, poor baby Opa Opa who doesn't get to have Derek anymore. So Derek is the Wanderer, the deity who shares in men's solitude. And in order to beckon us to the Phantom Realm, he posed as an explorer and solicit solicited the aid of the Sons of St. Koinak. In spite of this, I do not feel as though I've been deceived, nor do I harbor any resentment. Rather, I simply feel sad. I understand. It is as if a dear friend was suddenly, was suddenly spirited, away, spirited far away. In hindsight, perhaps it was an expectation of the coming battle that he had kept men at arm's length. Oak. I imagine it must be even harder for you. But to know that one of the twelve walked among us, it makes me want to do the best we can by them. Aye, since time immemorial, the twelve have watched over all who abide on this star. And even as they fulfilled their purpose of maintaining stability, as beings possessed of, of sentience, they also heeded the hearts of men. So let us likewise heed their hearts, and do our utmost to grant them their desire. Then I believe we all know what comes next. Smashing! No, no, Girheen, if I remember correctly, it was just that you could walk on that water due to the presence of the Omphalos there. It, we even had the opportunity to comment on it and be like, ah, Yurianje made a spell that allows you to do that. And when we answered it, Derek was like, oh, interesting. That you'd made a spell for that. Or something like that. By all indications, this will be the final foray into the God's Sanctum. This task, we entrust to you and your adventure friends once more, Katsu. As there's no telling what may happen afterwards, I shall remain on guard here. Twice now you've triumphed, and I have faith that you will do so yet again. Go well, Katsu. Shucks, I can't help you in combat once again. Oh man, oh, such a shame. Big oof. It's fine, Girahin. It's it's a long time since that cutscene happened originally, and maybe you didn't notice when we did it here. Like maybe maybe you were like not focused on specifically the stream at that very moment and didn't see it. 
Um, or maybe you hadn't come in. I'm pretty sure with that you you were there before we left Charlien, so you could have seen it. But hey, maybe you were distracted. And it's been a long time, and it's not super important, right? It's like this is a kind a kind of observation that is like, in hindsight, all of the signs were there that Derek, there's something with Derek. Like the first big major sign that there's something sus about Derek is the part where he's like, Oh yeah, I already know everything about uh, about the uh, Sanctums. Like, oh yeah? Really? Do we have a player 8 that wants to come along? Or is this all we... Uh, everybody? Is this everybody? I don't, I don't know if there's uh, anyone else, but uh, if you want to come, uh, Orkney. A random elf, and their first name is Elf. Mm, you may let me know when you're ready. Hmm, is does this work? Nine minutes. That's longer than the other two. That's a little weird. I guess it's a little late. Right, yeah, Silverman, the reason why I'm on Eorzea time is because it's very convenient for coordinating queues. Like if, for example, we're doing frontline or queuing into alliance raid or something, right? Then I can be like, oh yeah, we will queue when this says 11. 
And if you just click like switch yours to Eorzea time and you're in E like in the correct data center, then it should be exactly the same. I'm pretty sure like it's the same worldwide, but like not not one hundred percent. But it's very convenient because then we can just say when it says eleven we queue. And then we can potentially queue into each other. Whereas if I said said it's a local time or server time, then it would be like, all right, I'll queue when it says 8.48, and then we sit here for like 60 seconds. Whereas with Eorzea time, it takes like 20 or 30 seconds for it to like <clears throat> pass to 10 here, or 11.10. You can display both at the same time. That is true, but is it necessary? Like I, I have my, I have my local time on two of my monitors. <laughs> <laughs> my local time supplement is GMT plus one. Zachary says, wish I could travel to a European, European data center. Maybe one day, but at the very least, very soon we will be able to to all meet over in Australia. <laughs> With the OCE uh, test. Yeah, it is true you can have it show multiple at once. You might notice that the majority of Small Kai's UI is actually the default. Like, you might think, are you serious that you've put your MSQ up here on top of your limit break? That's how it is by design for some reason. Like, the only things I've changed on Small Kai is uh, gauge positions, the size of the chat log, um, the position of the party frames. And of course, these three hotbars and the addition of this hotbar. Most everything else, I've just left it. That's also, that's also why my main has one single bar for uh, buffs and debuffs, whereas Small Kai has like three or four. Because if you make a new character today, then it, they'll have that. But my my main was, is so old that it predated the option. I'm pretty sure. Indeed, Silvermint, if you can see your LB bar out in the open world, it's usually in a context where it doesn't matter anyway. Now that is an entrance. Onwards to glory! I just, you know, tank stands on and went for it because I wasn't sure if the other tanks were with me. 
I am probably the weakest tank in the group. Because I'm just, you know, full 640, where the other tanks are almost certainly partly 650, if not like 660, with a relic weapon and everything. I don't even need to check. Very likely that it is the case. Which is also part of the reason why I'm not exactly trying to main tank. But I'm ready. If it is needed. For they who vanquished my pupil, Wiregard. It shall be my pleasure to welcome you personally. Wah! I have looked forward to this moment, children of man. The scholar shall measure your depth of knowledge. Well then you're going to be mildly disappointed, Thaliac. <laughs> Peter, thank you so much. I'm really glad to hear that. Oh, whoops. Excuse me, excuse me. Join me in deepest knowledge. Let flow the waters of your mind. And you shall find new paths. Ha! Huh. Wait. I was really confused by why people went so far to the side. Yeah, thank you, Peter, and also welcome to Eorzea. It sounds like you're new to the game. Share with me your ruminations. Another one. Not 
Not all answers can be obtained through might. Oh, that, this is actually a bad spot, but uh, I feel like I'm a little, little late for that. I have to run for it the moment we can move. Yeah, I would probably be fine. I was actually, I was actually more announcing it because I saw Ryan right behind me. <laughs> That, that's the worst, when you see someone who clearly trusted you, and then... Eh. Well done, wise children. Well done. Smooth sailing so far, I see. Come then, mortals. Have you got the stones to face the navigator? Let me prepare a suitable stage for our union. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Peter. That's a uh, that is uh, like a, a huge part of what I've been doing, as you as you can may know from like the amount of videos I have on that subject. I'm glad to hear that a lot of people have found them helpful. There's particularly been a lot of people given the uh, the newcomers from Xbox as well. I'm just I'm just really glad that people are finding my guides helpful. So thank you. Hmm, for some reason I assumed I could get away. Can you contend with she who rules the tides? My trident parts the very sea. See, so we talked about this earlier with the uh, pet position problems. You could technically, as a scholar, for example, send your pet down that path now. sitting here like how did that dragoon make it so fast it's because they got rest <laughs> the ultra big brain to avoid that mechanic just to just be dead i've also seen a paladin just use hallowed ground and let themselves get knocked into a corner instead Uh oh. <laughs> well, <coughs> I hope I hope you, I hope it was worth it, Orkney. <laughs> and moment when you get smacked into the wall, so while. The uh, response doesn't kill you outright. Mm, the wall did. <laughs> Join us in the excitement. Dance upon the waves.
Shine Sun says, Have you ever been told you sound like PewDiePie? Not just the accent. No, I have not. <laughs> I've actually... The, the, I think the one thing that people have said a lot is that uh, they, they, may, they say things like, I look like Ed Sheeran. Or a younger version of Zeno. Um, but I've never heard anyone actually say I sound like PewDiePie. Um, but I guess part of it, maybe the accent might be similar since uh, PewDiePie is Swedish, right? And I'm Danish. So maybe there's that, like, maybe there's a connection there. Yeah, exactly. Zeno's is Vex. I, I have a list. And, like, when people say I look like someone, I usually write it down. But may maybe I should write down that I also sound like PewDiePie. <laughs> I, I believe the, the, the joke there, Silvermint, is that uh, I have, like, reddish looking hair. And uh, maybe I look like, uh, to some people, like Zeno with hair, but less beard? To seek new horizons, you must come together as one. It falls to you and your... Yeah, Shine Sun, I've, I've not heard that one. I haven't actually watched PewDiePie very much myself, so... That would probably, uh... Make it harder. <laughs> Shine Sun says, therefore all gingers look the same, huh? You know, the weirdest part about that is that if you saw me in real life, you would... I don't think you would say I was a ginger. It's just that I'm like kind of a weak blonde, but there's like a like a like a glint in my hair that makes it look red. Um in 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 this particular context. I should have kept the plunge. Stand firm amidst the storm. And that that is pretty funny, Shine. But yeah, I have I have no one has said that before. <clears throat> Not that one in particular. The question then is whether that is a good or a bad thing. I could see the fun in that gleaming. I I wasn't like trying to like uh uh mean anything negative about uh, Orkney getting hit by it. It was more like I, it was genuinely meant as I hope it was worth it. I hope you enjoyed the 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 kiss you got <laughs> uh, as they died. Yeah, that was it. Uh, I know some people very surprisingly quickly got fed up with um, people doing like memeing with limb lane I mean it only happens that many times per fight and it's not like it's a f it's a difficult fight 
right? It's not that hard. So someone just taking a big hit isn't that big of a deal. But it, I think it's all in good fun. Oh, I really thought that would break. Your prayers have given us strength. By fighting you, that strength shall be returned to the star. Come, grant us our heart's desire. Say not your steps. Yeah, exactly, Gleaming. Like, my experience of that was that people discovered that the gimmick was there, and then people, like, messed around with the gimmick for, like, around a week. Um, and then the next week, people started being like, Er, if you do it, I won't heal your rest, you grr, 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 grr. Angry, angry. Uh, and then the week after that, people had already stopped, because it wasn't even, like, it wasn't even interesting anymore. Like... Why was it such big of a deal? People were like... For the most part, people were doing it because it was, like, new and interesting. So obviously it would eventually stop. But people were treating it like... People kept doing it. But I think the reason is that... Every time... Like, maybe some people did Thalaya multiple times in the same week, and the way it felt to them was that everyone was doing it. And given that the rest of the players in a random group just feels... Sometimes can feel like a big blob of, of whatever... It might feel like it's just everyone being annoying, right? But it isn't really a big deal. Hello, Syrup. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, personally, if I if I see someone like do the do the gimmick, I'll just like if they're alive, I'll heal them up afterwards. It's no big deal. If I'm the healer, of course. Can you even do that? Uh, do it more than once per fight? You can, yes. There is a set amount of opportunities to do it. And if you're alive and attempt to do it every time there is an opening, then it can happen. The time you have to do it is you have to do the emote in the time between her just having finished a mechanic and her starting to do a new mechanic. Uh, and I, uh, I speak from experience, because I've only been hit by it once, and I've only tried once. So I knew exactly how to do it, and I did it. <laughs> Incidentally, I died, and I was the main tank, so... <laughs> I wasn't super popular as a result. Some people were a little annoyed. <laughs> Whoops. I think it's 95% of your HP. I'm glad to hear that, Syrup. It seems we're being summoned. Go, my friend. I will stay here with the others.
Uh oh, I can't interrupt that. A little more than 95% of your HP? I mean, that's the reason why you can survive it and then die immediately after if something else hurts you. I'm pretty sure it's 95%. Like, I haven't checked the exact number, but I'm reasonably sure it's 95%. The will of the star has entrusted the future to you and yours. As entities charged with ensuring life on Aetheris, we rejoice in this outcome with all our hearts. Captain Eorzea! Tis time, beloved children. Time to bid farewell to the relics of the past. People waited. Nice. Come, children, fulfill our final wish. See every last most of us returns to the star. Okay, I will uh, turn off my tank stance then. It does seem like the warrior actually also wanted to play ball. Wait. Nope, they, they are still working on it. Apparently I got a really big lead. Now, I didn't see very clearly where where the uh, cleaves were, but I'm pretty sure it's here. Yeah, same. Uh, it took me at least. I think I think I didn't quite get that mechanic properly until the second time I did it. In fairness, the first time I did it, I was streaming, and turns out I'm not as good at learning mechanics when I'm streaming. Donut at the end. Blessings be upon the Theris. Tank Buster. Wham. Thanks for the blessing. I I guess. I don't feel very blessed. I feel like I'm in immense pain, to be completely honest with you. Fallless rain. Starts over there. Wait a minute. That means that the direction of the moons exploding or go going by is actually random. Because it doesn't. It, it can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Huh. How random. 
I'm pretty sure at least. Right, are you ready to count? One. Two. Three. Four. There it is. You're right, Silverman. Wouldn't it have been hilarious, though, if if after all that research and time, Silvermint, <laughs> it turned out to be just a Square Enix RNG? This is also the easiest configuration on this mechanic. Just stay put and then swap halfway. Maybe, hmm, maybe the reason why different, uh, the different bosses had, like, maybe, maybe there could be a lore disc explanation as to why some of the bosses are significantly more prominent in this fight than others, like, their mechanics have more representation. Uh, my thinking being that all of the gods, like, you know, they spent <coughs> as much power as they could in a fight with you. But they had some left over. So right here at the end, they basically stack all together to squeeze out the last little bit. But some of them had less left over than others, right? Maybe there's an explanation there. Wait, what happened? They're basically like just squeezing out the last bit out of each sponge. Maybe that's why Azima forgot how to count to five. Haha. <laughs> 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 You know, something quite interesting. Remember, I spent the opener of the fight with tank stance on. But right around now, Ochni, like, surpassed me on enmity. But that's how long it takes if a tank bursts in the opener with tank stance on and then turns it off afterwards. That's how long it takes. That's also the gear advantage, sure, but it was more like, yeah, you're, you're right, Ogni. It's just, it was also just the, 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 um, the concept of being able to. Oh, apparently I guessed wrong. I was so confident. Yeah, that, that still, that's how long it takes for, I'm guessing, full 660? Reaper DPS 
to overcome the initial like enmity burst of a 640 Dark Knight tank. Now you're dead. Dark Knight's opener does an ungodly amount of damage. Well, Dark Knight has one of the most concentrated bursts in the game, or the, mo the one of the most massive bursts in the game, yes. Especially as a tank, it is quite wild. Um... Oh, whoops. I should not have greeted on any of these things. That was an accident. I can't actually... Well, I mean, if we when we get Bart to 90, <laughs> we have one item. I shouldn't have done that. That was really, really stupid. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that was good, Emya. Ryan says, yeah, I also greeted and I got a ninja item. I don't even play ninja. <laughs> Depending on which item you got, I happen to know that there are, like, I I can't remember if it's the boots or something. There might be, like, one item where the stat line is better than in, uh, like, for ninja than, like, a crafted piece or something. Hey, Slither Gale. Oh, that's pretty funny. Did, did you notice that I was there? <laughs> I'm glad that you were there as well, then. Katsu, are you alright? Thanks for clearing the way, Katsu. That being, I presume... That being, I presume, is to 12. You have done well, children of man. As promised, we shall reveal the truth in its entirety. Our desire is simply thus, to give ourselves unto the star as a blessing. In the twelve millennia we have existed, we have come to harbor tremendous power through prayers. Through battle, our essence shall unravel and return to the star, where it might give rise to new life. Such is our final gift to you. You mean, you'll disappear? Yes, the fragments of our former souls, which serve as the core of our existence, shall rejoin the life stream. Yet, though we may fade from sight, our individuality lost, our stabilizing influence shall endure. The only thing to change is where your prayers find their way. Henceforth, it shall be this, the instrument of blessing, that receives the mortal, uh, receives of mortal hopes, hopes that shall be given back to the star. But your presence brings comfort to mankind. Everyone would wish for you to remain. Must you truly fade away? Since gl such gladdening things you say, child, we must confess what we do, we also do for ourselves. When mankind overcame the final days, it so moved us that even he we who were but constructs knew the greatest joy. You have shown your unfaltering love for the world. In return, we would show our undying love for you. Worry not, myths are wont to be woven and passed down, and then busted on Final Fantasy XIV Mythbusters. <clears throat> so long as men hold the twelve in fondness, we shall live, live on in your faith in us. When you say such things... <laughs> that is a mega animated thing to say. <clears throat> the moment of parting is come. By our blessing, may you march towards a brighter future.
Farewell, beloved child children. Children. <laughs> I see you, Slither Gale. Sometimes what people do is they just tell me that they want to come as well, and then we'll figure out, like, coordinating cues. But given that we hadn't entered, you had a good chance. I'm glad you managed. When you're ready, brothers and sisters. May the font of your ingenuity ever flow. Yours is the strength to destroy all obstacles. Abide in virtue and hold fast to the truth. There's meaning in your deeds. Celebrate life and embrace death. May you flourish and reap a bountiful harvest. In your limited time, have boundless compassion. Carry yourselves with honor and forge on towards victory. Harbor love in your heart for yourself, for others, and for the world. From past to, fu to future, the river of knowledge flows. Be part of its nourishing waters. May a wonderful new world greet you beyond destiny's horizon. Be calm as the ocean, and you shall weather any storm. I can't come up with a good sentence! As the wind blows unfettered, may you be free to follow your heart. Never mind, I got one! Oh, now I'm late! Now I have to awkwardly walk behind everyone else. Ook! You needn't agonize so, Oshun. Remain with them if that is if that be your desire. But this is what we've dreamed of, to return to the star together. I just... I, I never imagined that I would grow so fond of them. That parting would be so hard. Long as we have abided in patience to rejoin the live stream. For the drop in the river of time that is man's fleeting life. Why not share your fate with them? Follow your heart as you ever have. And when the time comes, we shall meet again. Oh man, you all had had good wise words for me as well. You had doubled down. Ah, I lose. Look, it's Derek. I've decided to continue journeying a while longer. Words can't well express my surprise when I opened my eyes to see Derek standing there.
I'm naturally curious as to what happened, but above all, I rejoice for a dear friend returned. So, Derek! What happened? <sighs> what to say in such a moment? Best to speak from the heart, I suppose. I'm glad to be back. And we're glad to have you back. Glad hardly suffices to describe it. We're over the moon that you're still here, Derek. Or sh should we call you Oshan? I no longer have Oshan's power. Derek will do. Oh, well, in that case... <laughs> I was remade from the portion of my essence that wasn't returned to the star, and will live out my days as a man. May I ask what happened? No sooner had the twelve vanished than you reappeared before us. At the very last, I couldn't bear it. Couldn't bear to say farewell. Your earnest friendship had weighed down my, my steps. And the little fellow's fervent call halted them. I was overwhelmed by the keenest longing to remain among you and see more of the world I love. Upon seeing me torn, my brethren bade me follow my heart. I needed no further urging. We created the instrument of blessing in the faith, faith that one day the star would no longer need our guiding hand. Thanks to you, that day has finally come. Ah, but I ramble. How uncharacteristic. Let us head back to the Umphalus, shall we? Zachary says, do you think we'll see Derek in the new world? It is a possibility that, like, just like how you can randomly find Alpha and Omega around the world if you've done the Omega raid storyline, maybe Derek will appear randomly over the around the world if you've done this storyline. What do you mean, Chelsea? That Derek did not heed his own advice. He stayed his steps. <laughs> you can see Derek right now in the Hatching Tide event. Oh, well, there we go. I wonder if he's there if you've not done this quest. Well, we must return to Charlian. The forum will be expecting a report. Yet, if the entire truth were to be revealed to the public, it would shake the very funda foundation of the worship of the Twelve. I, in penning our report, we would do well to consult the forum on what details are safe to disclose. Much pertaining to the field of mythology will need to be obfuscated, I fear. Worry not on my account, inspired by our findings, I have a mind to examine the Twelve in the context of reception theory. The people's perception of deities are wont to be informed by their culture. By comparing the differences across eras and regions, I believe we may uncover heretofore unseen aspects to the Twelve. Reception theory, you say? Most intriguing. I should like to see the fruits of your research when I visit Shalian. When you do, have care not to reveal who you used to be. Our scholars would be all over you like starved beasts. I see. Perhaps I shall wait a while longer before I come calling. Before I came to you, I simply roamed the world. I had no objective. Nothing I wished to find. With this second chance I have, I mean to undertake my travels with a renewed perspective. But ere I set out...
I would move my brethren's hopes elsewhere. So place in men's midst. Oh, what a wonderful idea. If you don't mind, we should like to accompany you. By all means, we make for the Sanctum of the Twelve in the East Shroud. I, I, that only makes me more curious, Chelsea. What was it you, you just realized? That was a weird place for that destination to be. Why wasn't it here? Ah, oh, no matter how many times I visit the Sanctum, its majesty never fails to move me. And the rich history, originally built during the dawn of the fifth astral era, it was reclaimed by the wood before being restored in the wake of the Calamity. Truly, it stands as a testament to the influence that magical civilizations and city-states have had upon Eorzean culture. This sanctum harbors the hopes of men, and now those of my brethren shall join them. If you're not averse, I would speak a little of my brethren, that is, those individuals whose essence lent them form. As it pertains to another age, some concepts may be foreign to you, but would you be interested nonetheless? Excellent. Byregard was a man with a gift for creating inanimate objects, such as buildings and furnishings. With his, with his abilities, he served a supervi uh, su su supervisory role at the bu uh, Bureau of the Architect, where he was nothing short of a pillar. His chief was carefree to a fault, you see, and he took it upon himself to ensure the work was done. Ralga was a brawny man whom Venar encountered on her travels. They quickly s struck up a friendship, and he joined her on a quest to destroy an enormous meteor that was hurtling towards the star. It is fair to say this event gave rise to the legend surrounding the destroyer. Azima was a woman who served as a judici judicial officer in the Bureau of the Administrator, an experience which served her well as the Warden. She was an ardent proponent of the Seed of Asim, and dreamed of training under Venar and her successor. Now Thal was a close personal friend of mine. A merchant by trade, he was outwardly, outwardly gregarious, but also possessed a reserved side and knew quiet joy in his passion for ore. When men began treating him as a dual aspected god, it reminded me of the person he used to be, and I couldn't help but be struck with the pang of nostalgia. Nofika was a landscape architect of great repute who grew plants gathered from the star over. Despite being skilled in magic, she preferred to nurture plants as nature intended, and her garden ever bloomed with beautiful flowers. 
all who visit were visited were said to leave with their full with their souls salved. Althic was a researcher who observed newly made creations in Elpis. Although it was at his sister's urging that he first joined our faction, he soon became a stalwart believer in the cause, and always took the initiative in discussion. Haloni was a formidable warrior tasked with hunting creations that were deemed detrimental to the star. For her prowess, she had been regarded as a leading candidate for the seat of uh, Pas Pashtarot, preserver of discipline and order. Mfina was the youngest among us, a student affiliated with the words of La Brea at the Academia Anida. Even within the prestigious institutions, he was considered a, a, prodigy, a prodigy, and hers were the hands that created the magic to isolate and seal Zodiac. Hmm. Thaliac was the headmaster of the Academia Anida, a man of learning and leadership both. He presided over the institution's myriad faculties. No, no known phenomenon existed in which he wasn't versed. Words do, words do, not, words do not do justice to express the remarkable scholar that he was. Nemea was an observer in Elpis, like her older brother Althic. She possessed a caring and inquisitive nature and was like, liked and trusted by her peers. Limlane was a researcher at Me Metabazias uh, Thal Thalassa. Limlane was a researcher at Metabazias Thalassae, a faculty a facility for the observation and evaluation of sea life. So passionate was she about her work, she once threw a knife at someone who inadvertently came too close to her observation subject. <laughs> Just like me! <laughs> Oshun was a traveler whom Vena encountered in the wilderness. They shared a campfire and discussed at length what it meant to be free. Leaving my hopes as to wander in this place, I shall set forth anew, as simply a man named Derek. No last name? I'm pretty sure it's mandatory in the world of Final Fantasy XIV, buddy. And last, but not least, the Watcher. He was the chief archivist at Anamnes as Anida, and respected Vanar deeply as an individual, even as he cared for her as a dear friend. Indeed, among our number, none was more devoted to Venar, and that devoted man him, made him, and that devotion made him best suited to his duty and the solitude that accompanies it. That is all. There's a lot to remember, but I should be glad if they remain with you in some way. We're grateful that you should share with us these new aspects of Heidelin and the Twelve. Thank you. Well, this past time we headed back to Charlien. It wouldn't do to keep Ojika waiting. I assume you I assume you will be travelling via Lim to Lominsa, in which case, allow us to see you off from there. Till now we have wandered alone, but as I, but as I recently learned, a journey is better shared. Does that mean that that little seat in the middle is actually the Watcher's um, spot? Uh... Apparently, I teleported into a concert. Our friends are presently booking the passage. That's where you were. 
there's room aboard the next ship, so we'll be setting sail shortly. Oh, Derek, no sooner do we arrive in a crowded place than you up and disappear. Ah, uh, to the force of habit in order to avoid people. But I needn't do so anymore, do I? On the contrary, I should embrace the chance to connect with other souls. As your comrades, we completely agree. And remember, you're always welcome at the Beldesian Annex, so be sure to pay us a visit. You may depend on it. Thank you, Derek, for giving us your trust. And thank you as well, Katsu. Had you not been with us, we would have struggled to grant the Twelve their wish. Well, we had best find our vessel. While the report remains to be, un to be compiled, I believe we can officially declare our investigation complete. Till next we meet, my friends. <laughs> Walks further down the street. Bye again! Like, yeah, yeah, a little further, then turn back and wave one more time, everyone. Just really weird, Derek, out. Do you still have time, Katsu? Yeah, I embark on my journey. There's a place nearby I would like to visit. Might I ask you to accompany me? Thank you. Come, we shall head outside the city by the Tempest Gate. All the tanks. Hmm. Here, the wind whips in from the sea like a storm, but I've always found the sensation quite invigorating. As you wonder, I intend to strike west and then make my way through Upper and Outer Lanosea. And in order to ma mark my new beginning as a man, en route I wish to see Ocean's embrace with you. You need only accompany me across the bridge. From there, I shall continue on my own. Over the hills. Such a great wave that was such a great wave that was ripped the gods such a great wave that was that ripped the gods grip from the mainland. In the wake of the calamity, my brethren and I were all occupied with our respective duties. This is my very first time seeing the bridge. Shall we then? Follow Derek's lead and try not to fall behind. Ah, such an invigorating breeze. Oh, with Theris. Your beauty truly knows no bounds. Forgive me, I was lost in thought. The Opa Opa is just like. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to the bridge completion. Just the Opa Opa is just going absolutely crazy. <laughs> uh, 
"'Tis a fine bridge, boasting splendid views and brimming with life. The very image of man's determination to overcome adversity. I'm honored that it should be named Oshon. Well, this is as far as I asked you to come. But if you're willing, might we converse a little more? It occurs to me that I... It occurs to me I hadn't asked you about your opinion of the Twelve. How you personally perceive us, for instance, or what you felt when you faced us. Your words from the heart, I would take with me as a me memento. Is that so? The others will be glad to hear that. Thank you for humoring me, Katsu, and apologies for keeping you so long. I'm ready to set forth now, to witness a world filled with our blessing. To begin with, I shall tour Lanosea and visit those locales which are named after the Twelve, after which I shall go wherever the wind blows. Together with this fellow, of course, until such time as he tires of my company. This time, I shall embrace the joy of meeting and accept the sorrow of parting. When the time comes for me to return to the star, I shall share my experiences with my brethren. Needless to say, your words will feature prominently in my recounting. You will continue your own journeys, will you not? Then I shall look for then I shall look for you out there. Fare you well, my friend, and may the twelve bless you and keep you. Myths of the Realm. Wouldn't that have been insanely ironic if that had been like the last quest I planned to do on Small Kai or something like that? <laughs> You will continue your journey as well, right? Nah. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I completed the quest Soaring Prophets. The paintings of certain deities among the twelve will become available for purchase. <laughs> oh, 
Um, you know what's missing here? <laughs> you know what's missing here? If only the car had like, like, you know, an ability you could use to like honk. So you could like be like, mm -mm. That's the only thing missing from this situation is like just random incessant honking for no reason. Silverman. <laughs> no, I'm going to sleep forever now. Bye. <laughs> One day small Kai will also have to return to the star, so to speak. But that day is not today. Well, we just barely managed. <laughs> the funniest part about that was that that person came running like this. Like, they actually treated the car like it was an actual object. <laughs> exactly, Silverman. The, the, the part where they actually turned, like, walked around the car. Right. Well... That does mean that uh, that was um, the last of the post-game side content, like raids and stuff. Like side combat content, you could say, of Endwalker. So that was the uh, the parts we needed Dark Knight for. So now, now we're back to... Um, now we're back to bard level, well, archer leveling. Then I don't know, then... I don't know if we'll... Maybe maybe we should do the... Like, I don't know if we should do the MSQ first. Or if we should just level Bard. I think we'll level, bar, uh, level Archer Bard next time, at least. And also do the Hatching Tide Little Ladies Day event next week. I do believe it lasts long enough for that. With that, it would make sense to go to... Well, first of all, do this. Then we'll do this, and this, and this, and this. And take a picture for the next stream. And of course, if you want to be in the picture, you come on with me. You've about to do the last MSQ. That could happen. Like, if we actually reach level 90 with it, it would make sense. Silverman is logging in for the picture. But I can wait. I'll also have to st to clean my inventory. Hmm. Well then, <laughs> I wonder how long we were capped on causality. Oh well. We, what we would have bought on Small Kai would be like, maybe would have upgraded a crafted piece or something. 
All those relics you could have gotten. Ah, yes, all those relics that small guy was not even done a single Hildebrand quest would have been able to get. Which just have been crafted gear upgrades, I guess. But now it hardly matters. Like, maybe we'll do it with, um... With, uh... Like, who knows? Maybe we'll do the next... Um, MSQ with Bob. I don't even know. Maybe we'll never get around to it. Like, who knows? At some point, Dawn Trail comes out, and then suddenly I have a lot to do on my main. And then maybe we'll just do that a lot more. Adil, do you not want to be in the picture? Mm, right, if you want to do an emote for the for the thumbnail, then you have to make sure to the, you do the emote. If you want to do an expression, make sure to do that afterwards. Um, if you don't want to do an emote or you specifically want to sit, sit down. Yeah, there's no requirements to do anything specific. It's just I saw a lot of people sitting down, so a lot of people were sitting down. I think I'll use the trick where I move the camera so that uh, these extra flashy animations are hidden. There we go. Excellent. Then we just have to find an inn. Thank you for joining for the picture. The inn is down there. I'm glad that it didn't take so long that uh, we would have to split it up in two parts because I feel like the second part would be rather short. 
But not only did we manage to fit it all in one, but it took like exactly six hours with all the uh, side quests we ended up doing on the way. Just go over time was the worst that could happen. No, no, see, the thing is... It's like the accumulated time, like... If it takes two hours per part, then it takes us a total of six hours. If it takes three hours per part, then it means that we go three... Like, th then we're playing until some of you are gone to bed anyway, and then you miss it. And I don't want that. Um, so that that's the reason. Like, personally, you've seen me go overtime just to make sure we complete it. Nine hours is fine. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is genuinely that. Is that... I don't... I don't mind going over time, but if I can already see that, oh, we can't complete this before everyone's gone to bed, then I feel like it's better to, like, keep it for next time. Thank you so much for the five gifted memberships, Emir. Thank you. If I forget. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Da da, cha cha. Thought it was time for the usual slippery floor segment. Whoa! Well, thank you so much, Emir. I did actually also f get space for one more emote uh, Thursday, so I added the last one I had of the. Uh, of the Nissa lineup. Imagine small guy with squid world's voice. <laughs> right, well, that is the end of that, I suppose. Um so if you enjoyed the company of the wonderful people you might have seen in the chat today. Or me, for that matter. Remember that there's a Discord com community server you can join. We will find the weekly schedule so you can see what else is happening every week. I usually update it Sunday or Monday, which means, of course, tomorrow. You will also find the announcement room where I post links whenever I do post a new video or a, a stream or whatever it is. And if you go to the role assignments room, you can grab the reminder role. And if you do, you'll get a notification whenever I post a video or plan a stream or whatever. You will also, on top of that, get a reminder around 15 minutes before a stream starts or anything that is otherwise uh, time sensitive, so you don't miss a thing. Um, if you did enjoy this stream in particular, it also helps me a lot if you leave a like on the stream, because that tells the YouTube algorithm that you enjoy the stream and you like other people to enjoy it as well so thank you so much in advance um yeah aside from that if you would like to support the channel more directly you can you can buy a membership of your own you can also like Imya did gifted some memberships you can also buy you know a super chat if you like if you don't want to go through youtube you can also use the ko-fi link in the description it is all optional and all of the content on the channel is free for everyone so i don't want anyone to feel like they have to but all support is appreciated now with that i think next time we are probably going to be you know leveling art or, well archer so that we can finally become a bard um with that good night good morning afternoon or evening depending on where you are in the world and i hope to see you all very soon and now we just have to put small kai to bed for another week Good night. Good night.